But I think we got development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. live we do it monday tuesday wednesday thursday at 7 p.m pacific and we talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about you know what they are aliens conspiracy the paranormal the government academia the 24-hour news cycle propaganda and the general feeling that we live in the upside down as you know and like i said this show is live we are streaming on rockfin YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And as usual, as always, we're taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show tonight, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can join the Discord at troubledminds.org. Just click the Discord link, and uh, it's easy as that. You get a direct invite. Discord is a chat client. It's a voice client. It's a way you can share photographs and articles and uh, just have a conversation with people, which is what this show is all about. It's about uh, getting together and just having a conversation. No Church of Troubled Minds, just uh, more like a social club. And that's a good thing. I think, um, as always, we should consider uh, the things that we don't know and then the things we do know consider that maybe we don't know and it's possible we're wrong about some things. I think... uh, as part of the the old uh, you know mind yoga, as uh, Jay in uh, New York put it the other night, it's it's sort of one of those situations where I think you have to. I think to to keep yourself uh, you know at least myself anyway mostly sane, just because of all the crazy things going on in the world. I think that mental yoga is uh, necessary, brain yoga as it were. And what that means is, well, you just consider things, just think outside of. Uh, your paradigm. Think outside of, well, uh, what the mainstream media tries to feed you. Because uh, I think there's no no way to just become uh, more and more dumb than listening to the mainstream media. No offense. uh, It's just one guy's opinion. But uh, I think that's the way this goes, is uh, is we get together and we talk about uh, all the things, all the all the large things in life, and try and consider all of them. <laughs> there it is. What's up? Free TV says brain yoga or broga. Broga. That needs to be a T-shirt. Broga. Uh, 
um, yeah, so so that's what this is about. It's kind of just uh, you know suspending our disbelief for an evening considering things from mythology, folklore, and uh, the past, the present, and, of course, the future. And by doing that, well, uh, you know, we're, we're one of the only, as far as we're aware, well, you know, uh, kind of uh, rewinding the possibilities of extra- extraterrestrials and whatnot. Uh, we are um, one of the, you know, I, I kind of don't think a llama considers, uh, you know, um, time travel, for instance. No offense to llamas. They're probably fine animals, and, I, you know, I've never actually owned one myself. But you get my point, right? Uh, there, there's a, a certain point where uh, you become a, literally able to think outside of yourself, and humans have that capacity. And I think it's important. It's important to consider things larger than than life, larger than uh, us, uh, and consider us as you know, as, as I always like to joke, my my ego is as large as the sun. But uh, well, there are things that are much larger than the sun, and it can dwarf that in an instant in this universe. And so, uh, all that's okay. All that's okay to consider, and all of that is um, well, it is what it is. So that's why we get together and talk about this stuff. So as you know, uh, the only thing, the only rule is just be cool. Uh, we, we're, uh, that's what this is all about, getting together. And I truly believe, despite what the mainstream media tells us, with all the division politicking and all the poo flinging and all the dumb stuff, right, the dehumanizing people, depersoning folks, uh, so they can attack them, I think the only thing here is, well, just be cool. Just be chill. Just understand that uh, even though we're, we're certain of our convictions, uh, always consider that we may be wrong personally, myself and yourself. And I think that's how conversations happen, that we can have them, we can agree, we can disagree somewhere in between. And at the end of it, we could still be friends because, well, that's what makes the world go around, doesn't it? Uh, sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, sharing things like this. And so that's what this show's about. That's what the show's always been about. So one more time, if you want to be part of this tonight, 702-957-1037, click the discord link at troubledminds.org. And also uh, download the Fringe FM app. You can find it in the app stores, and uh, it's the easy one of one of the easiest ways to just listen to us. Fire up the app and hit play, and uh, you're listening to uh, uh, Michael Strange at 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Easy as that. And of course, then we have Joe Roop after that, and then we have uh, Ryan Gable after that. Lots of good stuff on this station, and uh, not not to mention Jess Rogie, Alex Exum. We have tons of good people here doing great things. So um, do that, and also join the Discord at Fringe.fm/chat. That will give you a direct invite to uh, the Fringe Discord as well. Okay, so tonight, um, as you know, you know me. Um, my thing is looking at news cycles, trying to analyze them. Uh, what are they trying to hide, uh, and what are they missing? Uh, and that's that's really what this is kind of about. When we when we delve into topics like this, um, there's there's some things happening out there that are probably pretty important to the world. But the issue is, well, they don't want to tell us those things. They want to tell us other things, right? And the whole game is uh, when you're controlling news cycles, you you end up um, pressing, uh, 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 well, good information out and squeezing bad information in because they want to keep the, uh, the headlines rolling past your face that say, uh, you know, Biden approval rating or, uh, you know, uh, Kim Kardashian's shoes or what have you. Right. You know, uh, you guys know uh, the, the comments about to hit the earth. Like every week we've got a new asteroid about to hit the earth article. Right. This type of stuff. They just keep pumping that stuff right in your face. And, you know, they expect you to, uh, like I say in the other show, we do a new show on Monday and Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific on Twitch. And uh, at the intro of that show says that uh, the most basic form of brainwashing is repetition. And that's the truth. And that's exactly what they want to do uh, with these news cycles. And that's why they it's just an avalanche of BS over and over and over again. And that's what this is about. It's about breaking that cycle of uh, media abuse. And well, here we are. So as I was checking out the news cycle and uh, looking for some good ideas for shows, uh, you know, there's no there's no. Uh, uh, no, no dearth of ideas, of course, but uh, some are better than others. And so uh, you dig a little bit, you look a lo- look around a little bit, and I found this. And this had a uh, an interesting uh, beginning to this article, and this is from artnews.com. And uh, this got me thinking about uh, the topic tonight and some other, again, larger implications of what's going on right here. So let's read just a little bit of this and then uh, get into this tonight. Here we go. So this is, uh, again, from artnews.com, and the headline is Millennia Old Tomb of Treasurer to Ramses II 
unveiled in Egypt. All right, which is fantastic, of course. Uh, Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great, I believe it is. Uh, this is uh, this is this is a, a golden time in Egypt, right? Uh, this is one of the most famous uh, eras in in the old old antiquity here. And uh, when they're unearthing these tombs, I think this is pretty cool. So let's let's read just a little bit of this, and then I'll tell you where it you know led my mind on the uh, roller coaster that it is. <laughs> the tomb of a treasurer to the Pharaoh Ramses the Second has been discovered in Egypt. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities unveiled the find on Saturday, allowing the press its first views of the tomb's richly decorated walls, which are lined with murals that are still partially intact, which of course is amazing if you ask me. Uh, Ramses II is believed to have ruled during the 13th century BCE. He was known for being among the most important pharaohs to have presided over Egypt during the New Kingdom period, when the empire was at the height of its power. In addition to being celebrated for the extent extent of his reign, uh, Ramses II is remembered for the cities and monuments he had built between 1279 BCE and 1213 BCE. Okay, so that's how this begins. It begins with uh, another fantastic archaeological find in Egypt, and uh, in in that that golden period of Ramses the Great, Ramses II, they found his treasurer. All right, they found the tomb of uh, Ramses the Great's treasurer, and uh, what that means is. Uh, who knows? Because, of course, they just allowed the press in. I haven't seen any um, direct photos myself. I'm not sure if they've actually been released yet. They're probably going to do their things and write their articles and all the rest of this because this is a brand new find as far as we're aware. But uh, let's continue. The tomb was discovered in uh, Saqqara, a necropolis in Giza that has previously yielded numerous significant archaeological finds. Located within the ancient Egyptian capital of Memphis, the site contains many important structures, including the Step Pyramid of Djoser. Djoser? Djoser. Uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site, Saqqara, is prized by Egyptologists and archaeologists because it contains graves from throughout ancient Egypt's history. And so reading this and thinking about this, it, it, it kind of got me thinking, okay? As you know, I like to do a little bit of thinking once in a while. Uh, well, <laughs> that's, some, some, some don't call it that, but we'll, we'll call it, well, just give me the benefit of the doubt for a minute. But uh, looking at this and considering this, I was like, all right, now this is, this is kind of cool. Like hopefully, uh, you know, the tomb is completely intact and we have one of those situations where we had uh, King Tut with all of those, you know, uh, wonderful things that they found sparkling in the dark when they... Uh, actually crack that tomb open. Maybe there's something like that about to be unleashed on the world, which is pretty cool. Uh, not to mention, by the way, the, the curse of the, 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 the Pharaoh, if you remember that. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Uh, that was the King Tut uh, version of the curse that people were actually dying after they, um, they, they cracked this tomb open and kind of entered. And, and they say that uh, there was some sort of um, uh, bacteria in there, some ancient bacteria that was able to, uh, to kill people. And that's sort of what happened. But there, not just that, there was uh, some curses going on and people dying that were uh, closely linked to King Tut's excavation of his burial uh, space. So interesting. Anyway, so that aside, just uh, just a, an aside here as, uh, you know, when you go into an ancient tomb, maybe be careful. How about that? So here we go. The newly discovered tomb belonged to uh, Ptah M. Wea, the chief treasurer to Ramses II. Ola El Aguizi, the who headed up the project, said that the tomb includes a shrine, a yard and walls carved with hieroglyphics. A number of stone blocks were also found. It is likely that uh, let's see, I lost my place. It is uh, it is likely that they once supported a ceiling, which may have since fallen in. It is possible, however, that the tomb will continue to bring forth new finds as work at the dig is still ongoing. The tomb is the latest in a series of recent finds in Egypt. In September, archaeologists discovered ritualistic objects at the Temple of Pharaohs, which is located about sixty miles east of Alexandria. And in February, a mummy with a golden tongue was unearthed. Okay, so now this this. This article here is kind of what got my mind moving, all right? This was like, okay, now this is pretty cool because uh, not only hopefully do we have some intact stuff going to be unearthed and some treasures and all the rest of this, but it also got me thinking about um, not just that curse of the pharaoh and the curse of the mummy as it's been known, but what about uh, disturbing 
burial places of the dead. All right. And so not only that, uh, do you think that's a good idea? So let's start with that. Let's start with that question. Even though we're talking about, uh, you know, archaeological treasures that could change the way we understand history. Do you think this stuff should be done? Do you think it is okay to just because there's going to be treasures here? Do you think, uh, just speaking ethically, do you think it's okay to maybe remove this stuff and, uh, you know, bring it all into some museum somewhere in uh, the UK, which is where a lot of this ends up, oddly enough. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I don't know. Maybe they're not going to do that. It was, that was kind of a bad joke on my part uh, because it used to end up that way. Now they have their own uh, um, Egyptian um, museums where a lot of this stuff does end up. But, but point being is that, uh, okay, so if, if they do and they start pulling all these amazing, amazing treasures out of this, this tomb that they just discovered of the treasurer of Ramses the Great, uh, do you think they should ethically? All right, so that's the first thing on my mind, uh, just to kind of get the conversation started. And then second, how about this? Uh, it got me thinking as well about the Egyptian funerary practices. And of course, that would mean the Egyptian Book of the Dead and how and why they do a bunch of these things. So so I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, right, so we'll see. We'll get into some of that stuff as we talk about it tonight. But what are your thoughts on that as we begin? If you want to be part of the show, I'd love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You could click the Discord link at troubledminds.org and we'll put you on the show put you on the show simple as that uh just jump in the caller queue and uh we're we're watching all i'm watching all the chats and trying to read it all and keep up with all you guys and uh also do this it's like it's like juggling six or eight pianos it's it's totally cool i got this i got this but okay so so this is where we begin all right sakara the unearthing of these treasures of of course the era of Ramses the Great. And so what do you think? Do you think it is ethical that we should be pulling treasures out of here and stashing them in a museum? Or do you think at some point we should just leave it alone? Because, of course, there, there are, right? Uh, uh, so a lot of these actual Egyptian burials, as they were, and the funerary rites, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, there were actually spells cast Okay, not just we'll get into some of the mummification uh, practices and things like this, if you guys want to talk about that tonight, but there were actual rituals. Okay, the Egyptian Book of the Dead consists of dozens, dozens and dozens of spells that they included as part of these burials. And of course, well, when you do that, what is the purpose? So that's my second question tonight. If you have these, what are they trying to do? All right. It's uh, clearly some form of reaching immortality all right it's some form of preparing the ones that have passed on for an afterlife okay but you know like uh, as we know today uh, the burial practices here in the united states are widely different just depends on your your um you know sort of your your orthodoxy or whatever you want to call it uh and some people uh you know they do cremation some people you know they get buried in the ground in a coffin right uh, there's there's lots of things that happen regarding this in particular but the thing is with a lot of this um it, it, it starts to make me wonder right in terms of when you mummify something and you keep it forever right G clearly the idea was to keep these things these bodies preserved for as long as possible for as close to forever as possible but why why and so you look at some of that, right? And it's maybe that path to immortality, right? That path to wherever this leads uh, with all of the, the spells from the Egyptian Book of the Dead and these funerary practices and rites and all the things they do. What was the goal? Was it for actually, like they say, to give them an easier way to pass into the, the afterworld, the, the other world, the whatever it happens to be? Was, was that what this is really for? Or... Was there some ancient understanding of DNA? And what they were doing with these mummification processes, they were actually trying to preserve the DNA of these individuals, which, of course, we've talked about this in science fiction. We've talked about, uh, you know, maybe putting somebody in like some kind of frozen cryogenic thing where, you know, maybe um, they're sick and we can't cure them. So you freeze them in the hopes that someday in the future you're actually able to bring them out of this stasis and 
cure them of whatever ailment they had, right? So these are some of those science fiction ideas that we kick around now, right, with modern technology. But what about if instead it ends up sort of like this? They were doing some sort of religious rites to not only preserve, let's say, the body itself and the DNA, but let's say they were doing these religious rites to park the spirit, the soul, as it were, as of some individual that they're burying. In this case, we're talking about the treasurer of Ramses the Great, so that at some point they were able to bring back these individuals through some sort of scientific resurrection and the funerary rites themselves were to park that spirit in sort of a holding pattern. So maybe flesh and energy could reunite once again. And that's what I was thinking about. Is that a possibility? Do you think that's what's going on here? So we'll dig into this a little bit tonight as we talk about um, you know these, this discovery of uh, Ramses II, uh, Ramses the Great, and this, uh, this classical time in antiquity that was probably the, the golden age of the old empire in Egypt. And, uh, of course, they've been doing these funerary practices, rites as they were, spells casting from the Egyptian Book of the Dead for a very, very long time. And so what do you think is going on with this? Not only are they trying to preserve the body, it seems like through these funerary rites, they're trying to preserve the spirit as well. And like I said, is it possible somehow, some way that maybe those things do come together again at some point? And uh, well, that's what's got my mind wandering tonight. And what do you think? As always, so the question begins like this. Do you think it's possible? First, first, ethically, do you think it's ethically cool to be dragging uh, these people out of their uh, burial chambers and putting them in museums? So ethically speaking, how do you feel about that? All right. In, in, in spite of all the things that we're learning about going back and, you know, changing history by what we learn from these, uh, these, these funer- funerary practices, do you think that's legitimately uh, ethical? All right. That's the first thing on my mind. The second thing is what exactly do you think they were preserving? If they were doing these mummifications and these funerary rites and these spells they were casting and the whole Egyptian Book of the Dead stuff, do you think it was some way to put the soul itself in stasis, in a holding pattern? So maybe one day, very much like bringing back the woolly mammoth through DNA, maybe you bring back Ramses the Great himself. Maybe you bring back this individual they just found in Saqqara. You tell me. What are your thoughts on this? And uh, that's what's got my mind moving tonight. And uh, (laughs) there you go. What's up? What's up? Derek's got it right. Oh, you know, just some casual thoughts on a Thursday. Exactly. And so so what was it? Now, are, are they trying to preserve the flesh? Are they trying to preserve the soul? Or are they trying to preserve both? So there's a union, a reunion, as it were, a resurrection, reunion, thousands of years in the future when the technology finally catches up. Or how about this? What about if the spirit, the soul itself, is trapped inside the DNA signature? And there's a way to resurrect that. You tell me. Anyway, those are just, uh, again, some ra- casual, random thoughts on a Thursday from Troubled Minds. Thanks for uh, Derek the Night Stalker for pointing that out. And that's what's on my mind tonight. What do you think? Ethically, is it cool to be dragging these, uh, these old Egyptians out of their tombs? And what do you think was going on with the Egyptian Book of the Dead? What was the whole idea? What were they trying to preserve? And do you think it wasn't just a step into the, the, the underworld, the afterworld, into the next whatever it is? Do you think preserving the body and the soul through DNA and through ritual spells. They were trying to reunite flesh and energy. So those are my thoughts tonight. That's where we begin. And of course, the way this works is I'd love to hear your thoughts. So as we continue, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. What do you think? Ethically, should we remove these ancient Egyptian burials from their burial site? And what were they trying to preserve through mummification and these ritual spells? Love to hear your thoughts. 
This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More after the break. All right, welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And tonight, we're talking about this amazing new find of the treasurer of Ramses the Great. Ethically, do you think it's okay to crack into this and put it in a museum? Do you think there's any curses invoked? And... Thinking further on this, do you think that it's possible that the entire funerary rites of the Egyptian Book of the Dead were to set up physical resurrection at some point? And that's what's on my mind tonight, just another Thursday night where you kind of kick it and talk about weird stuff, and that's what we do on this show. So so back to this, uh, as we say, uh, as we continue going... Um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's I think there's a lot to this, right? We've kind of considered this in the past. It's a it's a term called de-extinction. All right, de-extinction, and of course, in terms of like uh, you know the the animal world, uh, we, we talk about things like you know reviving the dodo bird, right? Uh, bringing back the dodo or the carrier pigeon or uh, bring uh, sorry, it was the homing pigeon. Is it the homing pigeon? Uh, uh, the carrier? I think one of them anyway. One of them are extinct, um, and of course, bringing back things like the woolly mammoth, and this sort of goes into Jurassic Park style type of thought, okay? And we have done that in the past, the, the whole, you know, DNA bringing back, uh, you know, the velociraptors or the T-Rexes or whatever, right? But I think in terms of this, we're not talking about uh, from, you know, millions of years ago. This is more sort of in the realm of um, people, and, you know, clearly there's a delineation in general popular thought uh, that animals don't have souls okay and i'm not i'm not going to say i'm a proponent of that i'm just saying it seems to be that there's a line drawn there but let's say they do or let's say they don't it, it's not relevant to this conversation tonight because we're not talking about bringing animals back well we are a little bit and we'll get to that um but what do you think uh, regarding this if you were able to take the direct dna that was preserved from thousands of years ago remember thousands from the e- egyptian antiquity not millions, thousands of years ago, that has been so well preserved by the mummification process and, of course, the funerary rites and spells they used, uh, what is all that, how does it all come together? If you were able to take the DNA and, you know, they've, they've done these amazing reconstructions of their faces and, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen all this stuff on, uh, you know, I think it's Discovery Channel and some other stuff, but, but what do you think the end goal was? All right. So it was clearly as as a lot of uh, just passing into the afterlife. OK, that's what this was about. But why preserve the body in such a way that it lasts for thousands and thousands of years? I think that's the question tonight. Do you think it's possible to take the DNA from an ancient pharaoh, as it were, or in this case, uh, we're going back to the the tomb of the treasurer of Ramses II. Of course, given all the funerary rites of a royalty, uh, a, a very notable person back then at the height of the Egyptian empire in, in antiquity. And of course, what are they trying to preserve? Can you pluck that DNA and maybe recreate that individual today? Or if not today, how about soon? let's say in the next 100 years, the next 500 years. And I think those are the types of questions that we're going to come uh, up against more and more as technology improves and gets better. But I just have some some thoughts on this regarding what do you think this is for? The Egyptian Book of the Dead, these funerary rites, again, trying to preserve the flesh for as long as they could, removing the organs and so they, you know, so the body doesn't rot from the inside out. And, you know, it's been impressive that they still say to this day that we're not exactly sure how the Egyptians themselves were able to contain that the mummification process, all right? We still don't know exactly how that went down because we can't do it ourselves with today's technology. So 
What do you think here? Do you think there's some sort of something happening with the spells again, putting the soul in a holding pattern? So one day when technology actually is able to resurrect or recreate these people from their exact DNA, that there is a remerging of the soul and the flesh. I don't know. Like I said, just an idea, just a thought. Do you think that's possible? That's what's on my mind tonight. And of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And you can click the Discord link at Troubled Minds, and we'll put you on the show. Troubledminds.org is the official website there. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this. Looks like we got a phone call. Let's go to the phone call. And it looks like we have our good friend, Joe, in Florida. Uh, welcome to the show, my man. How are you tonight? Not too bad. I was offline for a couple of days. I was uh, dealing with some bad food I ate, so I seem to be feeling better. Nice. What a subject for you to pick, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, right? Not, not only that, you're, you're almost an expert, aren't you? Well, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but... My first thought on the treasurer is maybe they should dig him up and put him in charge of the Federal Reserve right about now. <laughs> they need some help. <laughs> so, you know, maybe we can. We, <laughs> the, the, the guys we got running the show are half dead anyway. Maybe this guy can't do any worse. Yeah, amen to that. <laughs> um, you know, one of my big costume things is Stargate and Anubis. And Anubis is basically the god of embalming. You learn that, you know, uh, in class, you know, my, I just caught like the last two minutes and my thoughts are scattered, but I figured let us will open up now. Cause I don't know how much longer I'm going to last. And gotcha. again, I've been dealing with some foodborne illness. I ate something bad on Monday and it's been tagging along since Tuesday. Um, anyway, right to it. Um, as far as just looking at the Egyptians, if you look at all, most cultures, We've all had reverence. We've all had funeral, you know, funeral rites. Um, one thing in the books that we read about, and, you know, funeral directing books and the literature that we've had to read is, I forget who does the quote, but you could tell the measure of a society by how they respect their dead. So, you know, it's an open-ended question. Should we be messing with tombs? You know, I kind of, from what I've read on King Tut, a lot of bad things happened. You know, when uh, when they went into that tomb to take, you know, the uh, the remains of King Tut out. So, whether there was a legitimate curse or the indigenous people, the Egyptians, maybe they were helping, believe in that curse so much that it just manifested. Again, we get into all those things. Um, other examples of that would be the, the night walkers or whatever in Hawaii that we talked about, you know, do you create your own self-fulfilling prophecy? Should we take them out? The one person, in, uh, Rockfin, you know, I agree with Ron, somebody's going to steal them. You might as well take them out for the history of, you know, for the history of the country and those races, I, I guess. That Egyptian, you know, Egyptians are still alive. Egypt's still a country, but that particular culture, I would say, uh, is dead. That form of worship, for the most part, of Osiris and Sobek and Anubis, that's pretty much gone by the wayside. So, you know, maybe it's a dead religion. Maybe we're okay taking that out. Um, as far as putting the body in a holding pattern, that's great. And I could, you know, take a couple of looks on that. If you believe that maybe the Egyptians were missing with electricity and maybe that the um, pyramids and the obelisks had something to do with power, there could be some truth to that. I don't know. You know, um, could you remake somebody? I don't know that they could actually clone somebody from something that's dried and well-preserved, but they, they did well-preserve things, and it wasn't the desert. So it wasn't that hard. Um, 
what I would believe they might be able to do now is reprogram something. I mean, you know, you can start messing with people's DNA. So what happens if they're at least able to get a map of it? They're not going to find anything living. They're not going to find living tissue uh, unless they found it on their ice, which isn't going to happen. So maybe we can leave the cloning to uh, somebody they dig out of the permafrost in Siberia. That might be the case. But um, out of Egypt to make, you know, some kind of pharaoh, an exact clone, I'm not so sure. But maybe manipulate some DNA, whether it's a play on words. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Or maybe they just did it to put on a big show to maintain power. You know, I was reading something yesterday. It's kind of funny um, that you put it up. And it was basically, it's about God, and it was the priest of Moloch, and I'm trying to see what King Nimrod, so I believe this is all Babylonian, and basically to maintain power, he married his mother, and they had a kid, and that's when you get the Holy Trinity, and you see those traditions passed down into Egyptian, into Catholicism, into a lot of religions. Maybe it was done just to maintain power. It was a big show. Could be. Could be. All right. So so uh, I- interesting thought, too, you had there. You said that it's mostly a dead culture now. So do you think then, uh, speaking in terms of the, the funerary rites and maybe the spells that they did so many thousands of years ago with this, do you think that because it is a dead culture, maybe the magic has perished from the earth? Or do you think that uh, that would persist? You know, it's funny because I looked up, (laughs) this is going to make me sound really strange. (laughs) Um, You know, I just recently looked up to see if there was like a cult of Anubis. And something showed up, um, like in Seattle. But I think the guy was like an eye doctor. It was like like a gimmick. But I think the magic is belief. And belief is our own perspective, its own reality. The reason why I say that is, when I mean, you saw that costume I, I made of the dead alien astronaut, but before that, I've got a really good head of Anubis, and I did it as a gag just to see if I could do this costume, and it was a head of Anubis, and I wear it. It actually sits at the foot of the bed in my room. But then I start to wonder that I've had so much death around me that either I called it, I don't think I did, I actually don't think I called it. I think that um, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And I have this belief when I walk into work that I'm not a judger as a funeral director. I very so, I, I might judge, but I keep those things to myself. I don't refuse a funeral. You know, unless you're a pervert, you're convicted, you know, and I've got stories, believe me. But the magic as a whole, yes, is probably dead. Again, American Gods covers this pretty much in depth. Uh, belief, faith, and religion. You know, it changes. Maybe these gods did exist, but to exist throughout time, they changed faces and they changed forms. You know, into modernity, uh, into technology. So is it dead? I don't know. The reason why I say it's a dead culture is because when I was looking up ideas to do my my current Halloween deal, something came up that's saying basically being an Egyptian god is cultural appropriation or not. And I was like, what? You know, so all this, everybody got offended stuff. I read about it and it basically was like, it's not cultural appropriation because the religion is pretty much dead. And that's when I was like, let me look up if there's any cults. I have a friend of mine that's, um, he does what's called the left-hand path and he considers himself Sobek, which is like the alligator god in Egypt. We don't really ever talk about it. No back, right? You know, but I know he follows, I know he does a lot of research on that. He would be a good person to talk to. Um, for me, again, I, I kind of gave in. I got this head of Anubis literally sitting at the post of my bed, this helmet that I made looks right out of Stargate. <laughs> and, um, That's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, and, 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 I, and I honestly get in, you know, and the journey for me to be a funeral director was not one that I chose. So, 
it's one that kind of was by accident. And, you know, couldn't figure else anything out. I was about to quit doing funeral sales because I was like, what am I doing? It's just sales. I was ready to quit. And somebody messed up in the crematory. That's another story. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell people to make scared. <laughs> yeah, right. But somebody screwed up in the crematory. That sounds horrible. Um, I took their job, and uh, you know, once I took their job, I went back to school, and you know, for funeral directing, I already had a bachelor's degree and an expensive piece of paper that wasn't making me money. And uh, now I'm a funeral director. And wouldn't you ask? Know that every time I want to quit or talk about it, somebody writes a letter, or somebody calls my, you know, boss, or I get a Google review or something. And it keeps me going. So, All if right. ain't the universe playing games, I don't know. Um, <laughs> like I said, man, it makes you an expert in my opinion. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Do you think there's any uh, connection, correlation to uh, maybe modern funerary rites in this? Do you think that maybe some of that stuff uh, maybe uh, persisted or, like you said, changed, <laughs> became modern somehow? Do you think it is the same or similar or do you think it's completely different? Well, no, no, I, I, I think it is. I mean, I always make the joke because people in the funeral industry are always trying to reinvent uh, the wheel, you know, but what they don't realize is the wheel stops if you're dead and uh, you really can't reinvent it that much. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, people, the Hebrew Jewish religions, um, we all know, at least most of us, I hope now, they're not supposed to be embalmed. They're supposed to be buried by sundown, if possible, or the next day. Um, even Muslims, the same thing. So those are offshoots. You know, those religions, even though they don't get along, Abrahamic religions and all of that, they may not get along, but, you know, they still share the same ideas of death. Um, you know, when it comes to cremation, cremation is not a modern thing. We all know that, you know, Vikings were put out in a boat, probably lit on fire, yeah. and cremated. Yep. You know, the Hindus, they cremate. So, and embalming really, you know, the Egyptians did it. And they did it in a unique way by separating the body. And, you know, the body parts and the heart. And they had spells so that they could remember their name on the other side and all these things. And then they even had spells that would try to give them power over the gods, if that makes any sense. Um, getting back into modern times, you know, it was really during the Civil War that modern and bombing took place, you know, Abraham Lincoln and, and, and everything else after that. But cremation's always been a thing. Um, burying your dead. Um, you know, what else would we do? Would we put the bodies on pikes, like Flavie and Paler? You know, I mean, it was their enemies, but what else would you do? I can't think of it of any other way. You know, if it developed out of being sanitary, then that was it, and it became a custom. So, um, so there's maybe. different weird funeral rites where they, they <laughs> dig up, uh, I forget where it's at, where they dig up the body, and they sit with the body. I forget where it's the village somewhere that has a funeral custom where they dig them up. And they dress them up and they hang around with them. So, you know, I don't know. Bit, I don't know. Where, you know, a little, little bit horrific where, to um, me. Yeah. Uh, 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 right. Yeah, it is. That's, that's, it is. That's the whole thing, I guess. It just depends on, uh, as always, right? It depends on who you ask. And uh, as always, uh, fantastic stuff from you, my friend. Uh, any other thoughts on this? What we got, John? No, you know, I just, again, just maintaining power. Um, having respect, you know, one thing that I, I did forget to mention is, you know, if they could, like, you know, in theory, I think, I, I think it's a theory that they could supposedly trace back the blood lineage of Christ. You know, you hear about that in those, uh, I forget the novels, but the Merovingian or whatever it is, bloodline, you know, you wonder if maybe there is an Egyptian bloodline for the kings, for Ramses and all the kings before then. So, you know, as far as separating the body, maybe they had the idea of of uh, of cloning. Maybe they maybe they did. Maybe they really did have those ideas. Um, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't 
you know, why, why would they not? I mean, if they were building those things, the pyramids and all those things, why would they not have those ideas? Whether it was their own or you could say aliens did it, who the heck knows, but somebody came up with it. I'd like to believe we did it on our own, I'll be honest with you. So, perfect. I'll leave perfect. you on that. Great stuff. Great stuff. You're the best. Joe in Florida, I uh, appreciate the call. We'll talk to you soon. Have a, I hope you feel better. Have a good feel night. Better soon. We'll, talk, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> have a great one, bro. Alrighty, Thanks bye a bye. lot. Thanks a lot. There you go. So if you get, for those of you that don't know, he said it there, but uh, he's, he's, he's an old friend of the show and he is a funeral director. Like you heard him say he runs a crematory and all the rest of this stuff. And it kind of found him as he described there, uh, the, the, the profession as it were. So I think it is fitting, super fitting that we had uh, Joe call in here to be part of this conversation because he is as I said, an expert, right? We're talking about funerary rites. We're talking about the, uh, the, you know, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. We're talking about why. Why do you think they went to such great lengths to preserve the body of their royalty, right? Physically. Remember, they removed all the organs. They wrapped them up with all the, 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 the crazy stuff they put in there to keep them from rotting for thousands of years. For as long as it took. But the question is, for as long as it took to do what? Right. That's, well, that's what's on my mind tonight. And Joe brought up a good point there, actually. Uh, so if we're talking about maybe royal bloodlines and you're able to preserve the DNA of, let's say, Ramses the Great, for instance, that means at some point you can resurrect that royal bloodline. You understand what I'm saying here? So I don't know. That's the question I had what, that I had that I have on my mind tonight as part of this and how we, uh, you know, you know how we do this. We kind of go through open ended. We could take this anywhere you want. We could talk about reincarnation. We could talk about funerary rites. We can talk about the ancient Egyptians. We can talk about Ramses the Great. You know how this is. It goes wherever you want it to go. So if you want to be part of the show, you know the drill. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link. And so that's my, my postulation here is this. There's a couple different things going on. When you have funerary rites and the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the whole mummification process, like I said, one is clearly to preserve the flesh for as long as possible. To what end, I ask? And are these funerary rites some way to place the soul in a holding pattern, the spells, the ritual, all the rest of this, so maybe someday they can resurrect the flesh and reunite the spirit and the flesh of ancient royal blood. You tell me. You tell me. I don't know. Just uh, kicking out some ideas here, uh, trying to figure out what was going on with these uh, funerary rites and uh, mummification and this whole process. And, of course, you see where my mind goes. I see a simple article about, wow, this archaeological find seems kind of cool. Let's talk about this. But then, boom, (laughs) you start talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. And welcome to Troubled Minds. Welcome to Troubled Minds. So as we uh, wind this down and uh, get close to break time here, that's the question. Do you think it's cool to remove uh, some of these, some of these, uh, these, these pharaohs or whatever, these notable people they found from thousands of years ago? Do you think it's ethically okay? That's the first question on my mind. And then number two is what about the Egyptian Book of the Dead? What about the funerary, uh, uh, funerary aspect process of mummification? And was there an actual idea behind this to at some point resurrect not just the body, but also the soul? You tell me. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. More... Egyptian Book of the Dead, Funerary Rites, Ancient Egypt, and you. After the break, don't go anywhere. Be right back. Your optic nerve. 
through that optic nerve, they're transferring to your brain. People are more powerful. Random, random, random images we did as they traverse neurons in the brain. All right, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, and they also feel them planting or. Broadcasting live from a secret bunker just off the extraterrestrial highway. Somewhere in the desert sands outside of Las Vegas. From somewhere in space time, loosely labeled Generation X on planet Earth. Asking questions of you in earnest into the digital darkness. All right, good evening and welcome to Trouble Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. This show is live. We do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. And we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what those things are? Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Like I said, we're live. We're streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM, and we're taking your phone calls. As always, this is a conversation that goes two ways. If you're out there listening right now, it's a Thursday night, and you can hear me, you're invited to be on the show. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show, troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link, and uh, that's that. That's how you do it. It's easy peasy. Come join us uh, on the Discord. It's free. It's a chat client. It's a voice client. There's a great community of folks over there that are sharing ideas uh, very much like we do on this show. Like I said, the only rule there is uh, just be cool. Just be chill. It's okay. Uh, It's okay to be wrong. I believe we have the right to be wrong, and I truly believe that we can agree or disagree or somewhere in between and still be friends tomorrow. That's the only rule. That's the only rule. I know it's difficult sometimes because in this day and age, we find ourselves uh, stuck in this media, uh, this media frenzy of hate each other, hate your neighbor, hate this, hate that, hate, 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 right? As we're told, you know, oh, uh, cyberbullying is a bad thing. And then the would-be people that are saying this are the same people that are bullying folks, right? The same people that are telling you to hate your neighbor that are saying, hey, if you disagree politically, that person is the enemy, Right. How stupid is all this? The whole thing, that's part of this whole living in the upside down, which is part of what this show's about. Like I said, we can we can come together. We can be okay, even if we agree or disagree. There's usually because we're humans, right? We share that human experience, there's going to be more that we have in common than what we don't. Because that's just standard. That's normal. But the powers that be, the media, the governments, all that stuff, they don't want us to know these things. It's like the biggest kept secret, right? It really is. And that's what's going on with this. And that's why we do this and do this in the format, the open format we always do to get great calls. And we have amazing calls. I swear, uh, Troubled Minds, uh, the folks that out there listen, the smartest audience in radio, period period. And you'll see why. Hang tight. Uh, go back and listen to some old shows. We get some, we get some amazing, amazing phone calls. So there we go. So what we're talking about tonight as we do all that, again, also join the uh, fringe, uh, fringe.fm slash chat. That will give you a direct invite to the Fringe FM Discord as well. That's free. And uh, please do. Please do it. You can also download the, the Fringe FM app from the App Store, both Apple and uh, Android. It's uh, available everywhere, and it's the easiest way to uh, listen to Troubled Minds. Just press play. Download the app. Press play at 7 p.m., and uh, you'll get it. Uh, all right. So, so what we're talking about tonight is this. Now, this thing, as always, something catches my mind, and you know, my thought 
my thought just goes to the races. My thoughts go to the races and kind of turn this into uh, all kinds of uh, wacky stuff. And so this is what's going on right now. Uh, is this the from artnews.com, a millennia-old tomb of treasurer to Ramses II unveiled in Egypt. And of course, that's Ramses II is Ramses the Great. We're talking about a classical time in uh, Egyptian antiquity and probably the pinnacle of uh, the, the old kingdom, as it's called. Uh, and so the question on my mind tonight is regarding this do you think it's okay do you think it's ethically fine to actually uh, remove remove folks from tombs like this number one and then number two what do you think the Egyptians were trying to do with the Egyptian book of the dead with their funerary rites, with the mummification process and there's a whole bunch of things we could talk about there so we're talking about that Egyptian book of the dead we're talking about the ethics of this of finding and removing tombs and all the rest of that so one more time 702-957-1037 love to hear from you let's go to our good buddy the night stalker welcome Derek Derek in Massachusetts how you doing my friend Going on, brother. Great show. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. What are your thoughts? Uh, what about the ethics and all the rest of this? Oh man, uh, really cool topic. A lot of uh, lot of, like I wasn't going to call in. I'm getting drowned in stock in the aisle right now. I'm getting the uh, pre-Thanksgiving rush here. Nice. Um, but much cool stuff to uh, to not call in, you know. And uh, shout out to James uh, for being the man and let me uh, hop over him in the call queue. Uh, big pickups, James. Um, yeah. So. As far as like the desire to want to mummify your body, like I, I kind of get that. I mean, I understand that that inkling. Like, obviously, like I'm not gonna probably have the ability to like mummify myself or like preserve my body, but I understand like, like I I think I'm probably an organ donor, but thinking about it for too long kind of makes me like gives me the willies. Like, we don't, I don't know, we don't, we really don't know anything about what happens to us after we die. Maybe there is some kind of weird metaphysical connection with what you have with your body. So preserving it might be, might be a good thing. You know what I mean, like there's a, maybe there's a reason why different cultures consider it disrespectful to like desecrate a corpse or whatever, because there is some kind of lingering link between your soul and your body potentially. Um, so like if I was super rich then and I like these Egyptian pharaohs and stuff must've been living the absolute dream. Like, I feel like, especially way back in the day, like if you were a super elite, you probably just had it made even more than you do today. If you're a super elite, like it must've just been the best. So I can imagine like wanting to preserve that. Obviously I can, I can see like creating this room full of all your cool stuff and your, your pets and all that kind of stuff. Like I get the appeal, but like, with that being said, maybe like potentially, what if like only, the only mummies we find are the ones that like didn't actually um, get like their soul back, didn't actually like reincarnate? Like potentially, with Egypt, the thing about that's kind of weird about Egypt is that it seems like at the beginning of like recorded Egyptian history, they're like the most perfect society. They're at, they're at their peak at the beginning of their society, as far as like historical records would tell you. Um, which is interesting. You would think there'd be some kind of like bell curve where they peak. It's in the middle or something, and then there's a decline. But it's almost as if they start perfect, and then everything else is like a cheap imitation. Like the older pyramids are the better ones, and the newer ones are like trying to imitate the older ones. So what if like there was a more advanced funerary practice in like Kemet or in like this proto Egypt, well, whatever that term was that Kelly used a few weeks ago? Uh, I, just, I forget it. Um, but what if like they had a, a stronger grasp on like life after death? And they're able to like reincarnate or like hop back into their body or, or or stay alive for longer or whatever with some kind of more advanced like mummification practice or some, or some kind of more advanced like ceremony or something. And then later pharaohs or later Egyptians are trying to like remember how to do it, and they're doing this, and it's like it's almost like a like a cheap imitation. They're they're just trying to imitate what they what they think um, the the, the older pharaohs were doing in order to like gain a mortal life or you know what i mean like yeah so, sort of sort of emulate the ancient magic that maybe they they couldn't or, or don't even yeah. they didn't understand at some point maybe it's just beyond them that deep magic from yeah. the dawn of time yeah exactly um but also like we i think we got into this when we were talking about that that company that's like saving dna for the, the rich people or, or whatever like i kind of like the, the idea that the, these elites aren't able to stay alive like in the same body 
for a long time. Like if they're immortal, if there are some kind of immortal tier of of the powers that be that are like running the show, that they're not like they're not they might be doing weird stuff and trying to stay alive, but maybe they're able to just like through these ancient meditation practices and ancient like consciousness exercises and stuff, they're able to train their spirit or their soul or whatever to be able to keep their identity post death or whatever. Like if if we go back into like the source or when do we lose a piece of our like identity? Like I no longer, be, I'm, I'm no longer Derek afterwards. And I kind of merge back into the, to the all maybe they're able to like stay who they were and then remember their past life in their next incarnation and then able to like keep it like, and that would be pretty useful. And if you have like your knowledge of your prior life, if you like were a baby with everything you knew, from your hundred year life beforehand, you have a, a pretty big advantage. And I want, and there's a ton of stories, like different sci-fi that depicts that like out right now or in, like coming out in the future with uh Keanu and stuff of, of like these weird elite immortals that just have the ability to kind of like bounce their consciousness. Like they can't choose the body. They can't like, it's not like putting their body and their mind in a robot, but it's like, they're able to just hang on to their identity and uh, like on the like while they're flowing on the river sticks or whatever analogy you want to use they're able to just stay who they are and then they maybe want to keep their body so that like if their body maybe in the time when it actually worked if their body wasn't available they would pop into somebody else maybe some some like peasant class or whatever somebody they didn't they didn't want to to incarnate into so perhaps over time they're like all right let's let's keep our body let's, let's seal it off in this ritual space so that when my soul comes back, I'm able to find my actual body. And I want to keep, I want to keep being me when I come back. I don't want to come back as, as somebody else, you know, I think it's interesting, you know? Yeah. Well, sort of a way to, to reach into the after and cut off maybe that, uh, uh, you, the, the uh, reincarnation process and say, no, no. And when I come back, I want to exactly. choose. I don't, I don't want to be given a different choice. I want to choose what I was. I love it. So, so do you think that's part of what this may be then part of that Egyptian book of the dead, all this funerary stuff? Do you think it is like, think about it in terms of, like I said, the stasis and, you know, freezing somebody and then bringing them back when we have technology to cure them. This would be similar because of course, this is supposed to last for thousands of years, right? Into yeah. eternity even. So maybe that is the case here, right? They're, they're trying to find their body and uh, maybe that soul is in a holding pattern. Maybe it, uh, maybe oh, yeah. it is kind of put on hold through all these ancient spells or whatever. I don't know, man. Crazy it, stuff here. Go ahead. It makes me think, like, yeah, it makes me, th- makes me think that maybe the mummies we're finding are the ones that weren't able to, like, pop back in their body. And those, and so Ramsey's, it wasn't just like they're, they're too late in the process, where they, they didn't do it right, or something like messed it up, or whatever. They just got lost in the afterlife and they couldn't get back. So we're only finding those, and the ones that we open up and they're empty. Maybe they're not being raided by by pillagers. Maybe they're actually just like <laughs> the person. The person woke up and walked out. They you know? dug their way out. <laughs> I mean, there is there is a, there is another very famous um, religious story of a person hopping back into their body and, and 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 leaving their tomb. You know, like that 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 comes up in other other mythologies. If you catch my drift, you know, like that's that's very biblical. You know, um, so potentially, like I don't know, some of these elites, some of these ascended masters have more control over their, over their mind. Like even today, like Neem Kroli Baba and like the Maharishi and people who are into like, like, uh, Bhakti Yoga and like the, the, the gurus over in, over in, uh, India and stuff right now, the way they describe a lot of them dying, it's more so that they're just kind of getting their, their mortal coil. If they have more control from a lifetime of meditation and deep, deep, deep meditation, they have much more control over, over where their soul goes or what happens to their, to their body and stuff. So they, whenever they want to die, they essentially just leave, they just leave the body, you know? So I wonder if there's like another side to that where you can go back in, you know? And I wonder if the elites have been doing that for a really long time. Like, I really didn't think about this until your, your previous show, like at this point, probably like two months ago, but when we were talking about potentially them building clones or, or whatever, like the elites are trying to, trying to build clones, like pretend, what if, what if like they're able to do that still? And like, there's all kind of pictures of like, of like Taylor Swift and different celebrities that, that like look so much like like older versions like they look like they look celebrities that today have some kind of weird um lookalikes from like old timey pictures so the idea being like maybe like some kind of some kind of re- reincarnation process but what if like the elites have this ability or practice this ability cultivated this this mental capacity to 
keep their identity post death and then but it's more of a crapshoot who they land into like they can't this is the way we went the last time like they can't the elites end up in these like ugly ugly weird prince philip bodies and stuff because they don't have the luxury of choosing their 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 vessel so that maybe in the future what like bezos and these elites are doing with this with these companies are being able to build a vessel using their already existing dna take some of my dna off like build build your your new body and i'll hop into that and just pretend it's my nephew or something like that and keep my power that way keep my knowledge keep my dna so like you're saying maybe they maybe the goal is to if the elites have the power to come back from the afterlife with their own identity. The goal might be to get back into your body. Like these, they, they had it real, 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 real good. So if they can come back, they want to come back as them. You know, um, I feel like I'm kind of rambling, but you're, you're that's good. You're basically good. just my, my, my thought. Pretty you're much. good. You're in the right spot yeah. here. Uh, Kelly says uh, the, the term was Zep Tepe from the. Yeah, Zep Tepe. Zep Tepe. Thank yeah. you, Kelly. Thank you, and, Kelly. Uh, yeah. Another real quick thought before you take off here. Uh, Robert says yeah. maybe Juice thought. Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, and Jeff Bezos are reincarnated pharaohs. Oh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's possible. It's possible. I mean, it's very possible. They're all they're all elites. They're all like Zuckerberg isn't like some kind of uh, Cinderella story. He he went to the elite private schools. He he's, he's he's part of these things. So he's creating this metaverse now, where essentially you're there. You're going to be end, you're going to end up like maybe a more advanced version of it. And instead of like housing your mental capacity in some kind of weird ethereal metaverse you're able to like it's kind of it's kind of like a facsimile version of like what we're talking about just your identity being like elsewhere into some other kind of realm or whatever and it kind of kind of can pop in and out of the physical realm and then the, whatever this meta this death verse you know meta meta means dead that whole thing right like, i don't know it's interesting okay. but, uh, rivers made a good point before i leave that like these societies they view death like way 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 different than than we do like it's for for a lot of them like the actual physical life is like less of the, it's like it's not the main attraction like they're they're preparing for like death is like where the where the where the big stuff happens you know so um that's the real party. Not, <laughs> yeah it's the real party so maybe maybe they know something about what happens after they are the, so they're prepping it that way I, I really don't know but uh it's some some great maybe juice water and i can't wait for uh everyone else's thoughts and uh thank you again james for letting me hop in in front of you but appreciate it appreciate it james uh, thank you go. derek for the call you're the best go smash that stock brother we'll catch you later well later bro thanks, for the, call. thanks for the call you too man there we go simple as that you want to be part of the show 702-957-1037 that's the night stalker you can follow him scroll down click uh follow the night stalker he's got a youtube channel with not not a lot of content just yet but let's inspire him let's follow him even though there's nothing there and uh if you like what he says please do that one more time 702-957-1037 troubledminds.org we're talking about egyptian funerary practices let's go to jennifer in missouri thank you for being patient with us welcome to the show how are you jen good how are you doing doing a okay go right ahead it's nice to talk about egypt i mean that's always fun okay so the egyptian book of the dead is we know what it was i mean everybody's probably looked at it read it at some point <clears throat> and it's really interesting that you know their whole culture in egypt was focused around uh their whole lives were kind of shaped towards experiencing their passing into going into, you know, their afterlife. So they, their whole culture is a death culture. Like that was basically their, one of their religious texts, one of their primary religious texts. And initially I've heard that it was only given to um, like the royalty and the elites and the rich. And then later on it was more widely distributed. And in that book, which they got from their priests and everything, their priests and their sages and their, their wise men and their mystics saw the afterlife and what a soul would encounter and what they could expect to happen to them when they die. And so, and then they wrote it all down. So these people would study this after, even though after they'd let, they led their life as best they could in accordance with how they would need to live to go into immortality or to become a God, they, still may need some help. And so in this book, they had the names of all the different gods and all the different spirits they were going to encounter and what kind of questions they would be asked and what the right answer was and what their names were of all these different beings. And if they got it all right, you know, they would, if their heart, one weighed with the feather, you know, and they weren't eaten by the monster, because that would happen to some of them too. So it, it wasn't always a sure 
safe thing. But even to ensure that, you'd notice in the tombs, they have the paintings from the book itself. And they also had um, like pictures of that individual's life. And then also to, of course, their bodies well preserved so that they could see themselves, identify, remember who they were, and then were more likely to make it through the tribulations of the afterlife, which were supposed to be really <clears throat> difficult to navigate, if not impossible for most people if they did not know. And it's really interesting because they believe that there were um, nine bodies. And so they inside the body and one of them was immortal. And the only thing they left in the body was the heart. If I remember, if I, I think so, I think it was just the heart and nothing else. They'd pull out the brain and all the other organs, but those were kept in jars with the body so that the soul would find all those bits and pieces of themselves because those were parts of their body of their their entire self, which was made of these nine selves, and then could hopefully make it through all of the different trials, basically. And the magic spells that were done over the mummified bodies, and there were three different classifications of how these people were buried. So even the peasantry, I mean, people have heard that um, not even the, the, the poor people didn't get mummified, but there were some pharaohs who were nice enough to allow even poor people to mummify their dead and it wasn't as um elaborate they might not have had the hired mourners because they would even do that it was a very big to do so they would even have women who would go out in the streets wailing and mourning to encourage everyone else to really grieve wholeheartedly and show how much how upset they were about the passing and then they'd take the bodies into those their tombs and in the case of the pyramids with all of their things, but even in the tombs, I mean, all of their belongings, everything went in and they'd seal it up and they would think that that now they would, um, they did some kind of ritual where they would touch different points of the body to kind of wake it up, to wake up the soul and so that they could speak and move and talk. So there even might have been this idea that the mummy itself would get up and walk around in the pyramids and make its journey through the afterlife, hopefully becoming a god in the end of it all. And then all the people would come to the bottom of the pyramids and everything and worship the new god that was the pharaoh, who's now become a god, uh, assuming that he made it through the afterlife just fine. And I think it's neat that they would have all the little pinpoint, you know, on the wall, pictures of their life and everything to help remind the soul. This is how serious they were with this. And it's just, in the field of reads, you know, the aspect of the, their afterlife, which was, there was like three or four different types of afterlife. There was the field of reeds or rushes and then the lily, the of lake of lily or the lily of lake, whatever it was. And it was supposed to be like this, uh, basically like the exact life they had in here, but better basically forever. And I think just, just the fact that they were so, uh, so serious with this and how we aren't as serious, but they had a whole empire just dedicated to this idea that this was just a small phase of eternity. Exactly. Uh, fantastic stuff. We're out of time. Do you want to hang around after the break? It's up to you. Oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. All right. Be, I'm sure there'll be there's more stuff. It'll be awesome tonight. This is a great show. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Fantastic call. Appreciate it, Jennifer. If you guys want to follow Jennifer, please okay. scroll down and follow her channel. She's got a YouTube channel just starting up over there. Fantastic stuff. Thank you for the phone call. We're talking about the Egyptians, their funerary rites, and what's going on with this, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Don't go anywhere. More Troubled Minds after the break. Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. We're taking your phone calls. Tonight, we're discussing, yeah, you guessed it, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Egyptian funerary rites, and what is this about? What were they trying to accomplish? And is the afterlife 
well, let's say able to be avoided with just the right process. And that's what's on my mind tonight, because why the hell not? If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can join the Discord at troublebinds.org. All right, let's go. Let's go. We got some uh, some friends waiting on hold, and let's do it. Let's go. Let's get to our good buddy James of Salcedo Paranormal. Let's get him in here, and uh, let's talk about this crazy stuff. What's up, James? Thanks for being patient with us. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? I'm good. Um, thank you for having me. And yeah, no, it's literally no problem. I know people have to go to work or get up or go to bed or, you know, these different things. I don't mind. I'm here all night, like I said. So it's not a problem. Appreciate it, brother. I'll be here all night. <laughs> That's it. The jokes. Yep. This guy's got jokes. All right. So so what are your thoughts on uh, this thing? Like, it, it seems like a really large concept, right? Is it possible through ritual and through preserving the body through mummification to possibly maybe, uh, let's say, skip in line in the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, reincarnation process? What do you think about all that? I think it might even go back to something that uh, Joe mentioned, the first caller mentioned about the pyramids and there's all these ideas that they were they had, were some kind of uh, power either generators or collectors or conduits I wonder if that's connected to any of that as well Yeah, it could be, uh, like that whole pyramid power thing and the rest of that I wonder, I wonder if um you know how they said they've, they said the Great Pyramid is not a tomb, right? They've said, no, 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 it's, it's not a thing. It's something else entirely. So, so maybe, maybe this is built into to who knows, right? And, of course, the, the shape of the, 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 on the Giza Plateau, the pyramids, and the shape of the Orion, uh, Orion's belt, that whole thing. There's a whole lot here, isn't there? There seems to be a lot of, a lot of things cosmically, a lot of things uh, spiritually, and a lot of things that just kind of make you scratch your head. Um, I dig it. I dig the idea. Um, so, so I don't know. What else? What else you got, my friend? Well, the, the reason, part of the reason I say that is if you think of all the different um, I know there are different shafts in the pyramid that point up to angles and degrees where it'd be pretty hard to walk up them or go up them. They're like, and I don't have the details, but they're not made for walking. They're made more for light to come, to come in. Uh, I wonder if that's also, it's not just for light, it's for possibly spirits to come in and out of these pyramids. Ah. Maybe <laughs> there's something to do with that. Maybe, um, you know, maybe the ones, also the idea of finding tombs that are empty, maybe the people that were in them were eventually brought to these pyramids, and that's why they're not in their tombs, and then they were brought back to life using the pyramid somehow yeah i love it i love that idea so the ramps that go down into the pyramids weren't for walking these ramps aren't made for walking but that's just what they'll do right and so instead they're, you're they're allowed to come out maybe these souls maybe these spirits maybe the travel goes back and forth maybe this is part of that entire ritual dude uh you might be onto something here you might be onto something i love it i love it so so uh how does how does this continue uh, as a uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you you got amazing stuff here. Apparently, apparently, I didn't know this, but James is super into the pyramids. I, I'm impressed, my friend. I've always been interested in, in I said this in chat, in, in ancient peoples and what they thought about what happens after death and and just what's out there. I just I don't think, I don't talk about it a lot because I really don't know a lot about it. But um, it's still something I like to look into. Um, but just um i do think that's possible that maybe you know over time those practices did kind of fade away maybe that's why um maybe that's why supposedly and i remember hearing that there was supposed to be these uh these capstones on top of the pyramids that were supposed to be part of the process maybe um these i think they were gold or something like that i'm not sure um but maybe that they were part of the process and maybe once the the kind of that culture started to switch their ideas and move away from that they they intentionally took the took those those capstones and maybe other parts of the pyramids and changed them or took them away or and so that practice stopped over time 
Ah, so so stripping down the pyramid, of, I think it was a uh, was it limestone. I think it was supposed to be limestone on the outside, and I don't. I, I'm with you. I know there was some sort of cap on top that was supposed to collect the, the the gleaming sun and show for hundreds of miles around type of thing. I wonder if stripping down the pyramid, like you're suggesting, actually removed the the process, removed the the, the spells, as it were, and maybe that's what uh, led to, uh, as as Derek suggested, maybe the, the 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 tombs we find are the ones that haven't got up and walked away and turned into uh, Zuckerberg, Bezos, and uh, <laughs> and uh, Elon Musk. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, and if you think of, I mean, I know I've heard. If you look, if we look hard enough, you can find stories of people in modern days that go into the pyramids, and and sometimes they'll have like out of body experiences, or they'll have like visions of different times of older times. You know, so maybe there is still some residual energy there that some people can pick up on today. Yeah, which is good, and uh, again, it's still one of those spots, right? It's still. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say contested, but it's in one of those areas of the world, right, where things aren't always so stable, let's say. And so I wonder if there is sort of a uh, may- maybe a fight over those those ancient uh, powers, as it were, right, that maybe maybe there is something to that. And there's a reason for preserving those areas and keeping them well protected, because who knows, right? Like maybe somebody's using uh, these great pyramids or whatever, the Great Pyramid and the others for some sort of ritual on, oh, I don't know. Midsummer Night's Eve or something, you know what I mean? Wacky stuff to think in terms of that, huh? Yeah, and it makes me wonder about all the other pyramids around the world if they were used for similar things. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. And uh, it, once again, too, it seems like even, I think even in the Mexican culture, right, uh, South America and the rest of this stuff, uh, we have Central America mostly, but we have these same pyramids, similar anyway, uh, the Incas, the Aztecs, things like this, but they, those cultures, very similarly, they weren't used as tombs, right? It, like, it seems to be few and far between that these pyramid structures were actually used as what they described to us as, you know, these tombs, but they're not. They don't seem to be at all. So I dig it, man. Some sort of ritual something happening here. That's uh, uh, good, good, good stuff. Amazing as always, my friend. What else you got for us? No, that's it. But just I'm definitely not the only one suggesting these things. I'm pretty sure I've heard maybe not all of it, but bits and pieces of what I've just said in different podcasts and in different audiobooks. And, you know, so if you look into the stuff, you can find, you know, a lot of it is considered to be just not true you know it's the usual thing where it, people don't want to consider possibilities and so I mean, you may have to dig but i don't think you have to dig that hard into all this to find some interesting ideas and stories at the very least so that's all i have to say about that right on 100 percent. everybody follow james here he's got a podcast called salcedo paranormal scroll down both on rockfin and on youtube his link is right there he streams three times a week at 5 p.m pacific time and uh join the discord i'll actually link his discord in the chat as well thank you so much james for being patient with us tonight thanks for all the great ideas we'll talk to you soon my friend Yep, thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, man. You too. All right, let's keep on trucking. So tonight we're talking about, of course, the Egyptian funerary rites. We're talking about the Egyptian Book of the Dead. We're talking in terms of, do you think it's possible somehow, and what they were actually after, is some way to maybe skip in line in the reincarnation process. Meaning that if they were able to put this, the soul somehow in a holding pattern through the Book of the Dead, incantations and ritual spells, whatever else, and then preserving their body for thousands and thousands of years into perpetuity, that maybe one day they were able to bring both back. And the soul and the flesh were able to meet again and bring the Pharaoh's bloodline into the world. You tell me. That's that's what's on my mind tonight. And of course, it's spawned by this simple article where they just found this millennia-old tomb of treasurer to Ramses II. And it seems innocuous, except Ramses II was known as Ramses the Great. And this is actually the pinnacle. This is probably, in antiquity, the old kingdom, they call it. This was probably the golden age of Egypt. So this is, uh, well, I don't know, maybe. As you know, we like to drink the maybe juice and consider all these things as we talk about this stuff. And here we are doing it again. All right, so we got a phone call. Uh, I see you, Austin, there. Hang tight. We're going to go to the phone call that squeaked in just ahead of you, and then we'll go to you. So Austin coming up, phone. Let's go to the phone right now. Who is this? So welcome to the show. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? 
Joseph, right? Yeah, Joseph. Hey. What's up, Joseph? How so, are you, my friend? Welcome to the show. What's you, on your mind tonight? So what was the, can you read the, the thing? It's about the Egyptians saving, saving their souls and uh, like basically like getting a cheat code or. Exactly. I exactly. think, well, yep. what I think, yeah, I think, um, well, what I think it was more like programmed into everyone. Like, I think they tried, like, that's why it was such a grand pyramid in a small area, you know, and that's where everyone would gravitate towards it, you know, and then you could program them. And that makes sense because today, I mean, we had a lot of freedom and now today we have what what's going on, you know, like it's programming. You see it in everywhere, like arcades, video games, just on the internet. It's all, it's all by, a, by design. Okay. Me, uh, but meaning what though? So, so if the it's guy design, I asked like, what is the guy ahead. asked like, what, what, what would they think if an Egyptian Pharaoh found today, uh, technology or found us today? I think they would like, like I said the other day, they would be like an ant that found honey. They would be amazed that you don't have to have a giant, like you don't have to, you can just program from, from magic or whatever, you know? Exactly. And that's what we're talking about. So, so do, do you think it's possible though? So that, that's the question here. It, like, like, uh, as, as, uh, Derek said, I there, think it's definitely it, it, possible. Okay. So that there is some sort if, of cheat code. I mean, anything possible through, through preserving their body in perpetuity through this mummification process. And then the incantations, the ritual of the Egyptian book of the dead may be a way to waylay the spirit for just a moment, just long enough. And we're talking about a few thousand years in the blink of eternity or in, in terms of eternity, it's the blink of an eye. Right. It's almost no time whatsoever in terms of humanity yeah. and in terms of evolution and in terms of all the things that change on the earth. It's no time. So is that possible? I think that's that's the craziest part here that maybe I picture, this is that I picture it as like a roller coaster, like a super hot, super cold. And maybe that's why it's a desert where the Egyptians are, because they just harnessed so much of it that it just fuck it just fried. Uh, Thank you for uh, it not, just whatever you. it is. It just fries. Thank you for not cursing. <laughs> That's just yeah. I caught that. So it fried. It fried what? Like fried the uh, uh, the, the way the way out the way in. It fried the, the process. What do you think happened here? Maybe. Well, there's no trees. I mean, I I wouldn't really. That's just a theory I came up with at one time. Gotcha. But, that's fair enough. That's what we're here doing, man. We're kicking, we're kicking theories around like a soccer ball, having a good time. So it's all good. That's a, we call that drinking the maybe juice and it's totally cool. Um, okay. So, so if this is the case and maybe these guys were able to somehow suspend themselves, uh, the, the, the comment made by Robert there is, uh, what if, you know, the maybe juice thought of the night and I like this, is it possible that maybe some of these pharaohs got up and walked out? Let's say, you know, who knows? Recently, semi-recently, they just opened the door and walked out of there because they were able to maybe reunite with that soul. Or do you think it's deeper than that, meaning that they're waiting for our technology to be able to bring them back, and then that's when this union may happen? What do you think about that? That's, that's what I would think. I would think it's either they're waiting or like it opened because like they had no choice, because of the connection. Just the mass connection of everyone just they had like they had to otherwise someone else would it's kind of like combat i mean we militarized the planet it's like it's like a space race basically ah uh, a spiritual space race i love it <laughs> i love it yeah. good stuff good stuff uh what what else what other thoughts do you have on the egyptian book of the dead and this whole uh, funerary process anything else you got um, I mean, I, uh, like one time in, 
one time when I was writing really deep into uh, my experience, I had like a urge to write or I, I, I buried it in the ground and like all this, uh, all this stuff. And I was thinking maybe the channeling through artists, the channeling, the channeling of the purity, maybe that is like the, the, the product of like, like that we all, we all like not a Pharaoh, but I don't know. It would have to be, a. It, it couldn't be a single, I don't know. Maybe it could be a single person. I don't know. Right on. And it's okay. It's, a, it's okay to not know. That's what we're here doing, man. Uh, it, it's cool. It's, it's so good. I appreciate you calling in tonight. Thank you so much uh, for the call last night. Uh, yeah, we're, we're glad to have you as part of this crew. Uh, love your thoughts. Appreciate it so much, my man. Uh, this is uh, Joseph in Iowa. Thank you so much for the call. Yep. Yeah, peace. Thanks a lot, brother. Have a great night. There you go. All right. Simple as that. If you want to be part of the show, fantastic thoughts. All great calls. Like I said, it's a, it's a high bar out here because we have a fantastic call after fantastic call, and it's what makes this show. Like I said, you guys are always bailing me out night after night. I appreciate it so much. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037, troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link. Phone number is there as well. Let's uh, keep on trucking. We've, we're talking about, of course, the Egyptian funerary process. Do you think it is that cheat code? That's a good way to put it, Joseph. Thank Thank you of being able to skip that reincarnation process and maybe reunite the soul with the same body thousands of years in the future. Appreciate the, all, all the input tonight, guys, all the theories. Let's go to our good friend, Austin. What's up? Short, quick, short, quick, Austin. Welcome to the show. How are you, my man? Better than most, worse than some. How about yourself? Right on. Doing very well. Thank you so much. I heard. Go ahead. Go ahead. I heard what we were talking about. Um, I was really fascinated with the title when I seen that. I was like, "Oh, I gotta chime in." You know, you're always coming up with awesome topics, but I know you hate it when when people uh, put you up too much because you're on you're on a battle with yourself right now. You know, mastering your radio skills. <laughs> All and, good. All good. We're doing it together. We're doing it together, brother. All good. I, I appreciate you uh, being part of this. Uh, so, what are your thoughts? Yeah. What are your thoughts on this topic? Then, uh, do you think it is that cheat code as Joseph described, and it uh, maybe is some sort of ancient thing to where it's it was done so long ago, like deep magic from the dawn of time, as C.S. Lewis said to maybe be able to bring all this back 5,000 years in the future and bring back those pharaonic bloodlines. What do you think about that? Well, as easily as I could be wrong, I'm going to have to go ahead and put my chips in on this one and say yes. All right. Yes. Ancient astronaut I looked into this. yes. <laughs> yeah. I looked into this and I was like, wow, I know this is like almost seems off topic. But Jim Morrison, you know, the Doors, he like had some songs about this, actually, about he, he was like, and they built the pyramids in honor of their escaping. And it just made me think deeper about this. And then when I seen the Egyptian Book of the Dead, I'm like, holy crap. And then I, it, rem it reminded me of the Wheel of uh, Dalai Lama or Bava Chakra. Yeah, Bava Chakra, the Wheel of Bava Chakra. So it's like this incarnation wheel. And supposedly the only time you can break the cycle is when you're in the human form. And that's like your opportunity to shine. That's like the most luckiest thing to incarnate into out of all the things. Like they got the hungry ghost realm, the, um, which is based, you know, you, you would imagine what that would be like. <laughs> and, uh, then they got, uh, demigod realm, which would be like a really rich person, I guess. And, or maybe a king of somewhere, you know, something like that. And uh, it, it has, like, lists of all the, like, troubles you would have in those incarnations. And there, I can't remember exactly how many there are. There's probably at least nine. And this is the only one where we can break the cycle. So it makes me wonder, like, uh, Jim was always talking about, you know, nobody gets out of here alive. Like, well, <laughs> that's the prison planet kind of theory in a way. I'm not 100% on it, but I do mess with it a lot. You know, I like wondering about it. And I think if we do live in a prison planet, that might be the one way to break it. You know, maybe they studied it. Maybe they're obsessed. You know, they understood the incarnation cycle so much. They're obsessed 
with breaking the cycle. And maybe even breaking the cycle and then incarnating into places that they want to. Maybe they can draw their own diagram of how they want to incarnate and like put things in there that when they die kind of go with them as like guardians through their afterlife or something like that you know that's that's kind of what i got out of the book of the dead and i can't even remember what it was about but i remember after i looked into that i started looking into the stuff i'm talking about even more yeah, it seems like again, right? If you go back to ancient times, like like it, people like to crap on the old the old style, right? And but it seems like they were ahead of us in a lot of ways. So if this is literally could be a real thing, and they're able to skip in line in that the recycling incarnation process as you just described, then they were way ahead of us, like light years ahead of us. And well, who knows? Who knows? Uh, as again, drinking the maybe juice and doing our thing. We got like uh, yeah, I seen your cup. Yeah, heck yeah. We got like a minute and a half left. So, so uh, what, are your, what are your final thoughts on this? You're welcome to stay after we, we wrap up, too, if you want to. Just uh, just uh, help me wind down this radio segment. And uh, final thought for a minute and a half, and you're welcome to stay after that if you want. Yeah, I found uh, Jim Morrison was obsessed with this. Nikola Tesla was obsessed with this. I also heard of another guy that supposedly was super crazy that figured out the same technology as the pyramids and someone's probably thinking of a name while they're listening to me someone just told me about it and i can't remember what it was i told them about the show though uh if they got the name please put it in the comments because i cannot remember this name for the life of me but he he was like obsessed with this one girl and their parents wouldn't approve because uh she was like 16 or something and he was like some age and he was like uh they they just didn't have a relationship because it was like that time. I don't know what time of the year it was or whatever. And uh, so he built something in like honor of her and oh, she, yeah, yeah. he figured out, Oh, you know what I'm talking about already. Yeah, this, uh, it's in Florida. It's called the, uh, the limes, uh, the limestone castle, something, the coral castle, the coral castle. Yes, sir. That's exactly what it is. The coral castle. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Flo Finish. and kids. Kids said that they seen those like limestones floating like hot air balloons, and I just started cracking up. I'm like, oh my god, if that dude actually did that. <laughs> yeah, check out the Coral nuts. Castle. Uh, just Google it, the Coral Castle guys. You'll you'll find out exactly what he's talking about. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go. Final yeah, thought here. Mic drop. Mic drop. All right, perfect. Coral Castle mic drop. Thank you. Uh, you want to hang out afterward? You tell me. Yeah, I got time. I got all good, good time. I'll be chill. Okay. I'll be good gonna, this time. I'm, I'm going to kick you to the caller queue, and I'll, I'll bring you back in just a minute. Uh, appreciate it, Austin. Everybody follow right. Austin. He's got a YouTube channel called Short Quick. I'll have the links down below. Remind me, because I forgot again. <laughs> and uh, the, the appreciate we'll it, see. Brother. Appreciate it, brother. All right, so uh, as we wrap this up, that, that's what we're talking about. Is is all of this uh, something, plausible, something? Drinking the maybe juice, doing our troubled minds thing, and hanging out with great friends and uh, amazingly smart people. And that's what the show's about. Like I said, uh, Ash just sent me a message. He's all, wow, man, so many calls. What's going on? And I said, and every one of them's three times as smart as me. Isn't this insane? And here we are. Here we are. An embarrassment of riches. And like I always say, our secret weapon is you. Thank you so much for being part of this. Thanks for hanging out with us, spending all the time, being enthusiastic about the conversations. It means a lot to me. Uh, I love this stuff. I hope you love this stuff. And we're going to keep on doing it. So the bad news is tonight we're done. The good news is, God willing, we've got Monday. Well, that's what's going on. So if you love the show, please spread the word. And if you're listening to us on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Rook lighting the void. If you're listening to us on any other platform, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds. And as we finish, be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our Troubled Minds to yours, have a great night.
right, we're going to keep on trucking. We're off the fringe now, and so we have one more hour of Trouble Minds coming up. We are still talking about Egyptian funerary practices. Is this a cheat code? Does this allow bypassing the spiritual incarnation cycle? You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts on this if you want to be part of the show. We're going to keep on going as long as you're interested. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. I'm Michael Strange. This is Troubled Minds. Two-minute break. Two-minute break. And we'll be back to talk about more of this and consider all the possibilities. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Helps if I unmute myself. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. And, well, we're still doing this. We're still talking about all this crazy stuff. And all the crazy stuff tonight is uh, different from last night and div- different from the previous night and different from the previous night yet. Uh, Try not to be a one-trick pony here and talk about all kinds of interesting things. And tonight we're talking about the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And what that means is, well, a lot, a lot. Uh, as Mboli said in the chat, what's up, buddy? He said, the past is the future, right? They are maybe in terms of, let's say, scientific uh, discovery. Well, it seems like possibly the past was where it's at, including, well, uh, ritual incantation. Uh, why are they actually doing their thing in, in, in Egyptian, uh, uh, the funerary ritual with all that stuff, right? They're, they're putting these, these entities, these pharaohs, these whatever, the, 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 the royal bloodlines and all their top servants in these in these uh these uh these mummification the, the you know the 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 wraps the strands as uh lily says what oils were used in embalming some of the most common scents used by the egyptians were thyme lavender peppermint cedar rose almond oil and aloe while providing a def- definitive use in life these scents also had a purpose in death namely the process of egyptian mummification the famous method of embalming was developed around 2600 bce thank you lily appreciate that i have that actually exact thing uh, somewhere in one of these articles but i have to dig through and find it uh, there you go uh, high five thanks for helping me out appreciate that a uh, couple, couple quick shout outs here. Uh, Dark Devious, thank you so much for the tip over on Rockfin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Tam says she tipped as well. It didn't show up. Uh, I'll check my phone. We, it, it sometimes sends a text message when that happens. So thank you to Dark Devious and to Tam Bam for sending tips on Rockfin. I appreciate that, guys. Like I said, it does, uh, those, those little things, uh, are, are a gigantic gesture because, it does make make this go. Like I said, uh, the more of that, the more of this type of thing, the more interest and interaction and all of that, it, it means we can do this full time. It means we can do more of this, longer of this, extra days of this, all of those things. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, you guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, is there a link for Austin's YouTube page? We keep forgetting to put it on. On, uh, <laughs> on I, I keep telling him every night, oh, remind me to put your link up. And we forget every night. So it's been three nights now in a row. So, <laughs> But yeah, th- thank you guys so much for the tips. Like I said, it means a lot. Um, it does... Uh, it, it, Money is time, and it means time I don't have to spend doing something else, and I appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the conversations, and I'm glad you guys are part of it. Like I said, part of the chat, part of everything. Uh, You see what happens, right? I always say this, and this is the absolute truth of the matter. I'm me, you're you, but together we're us. And this is a perfect example of when you start a conversation and get so many brilliant people in one place, you see what transpires. It's a ton, a ton, a ton of really amazing things. So let's go back to our good buddy Austin in uh, Short Quick, which again, we'll, we'll <laughs> he's got to remind me again. I keep forgetting to put his, uh, his link uh, down with everybody else. Uh, we also got Kelly on deck here, but let's go back to Austin. Uh, welcome back, my friend. How are you? What is going on, brother? Hello. It almost seems like I'm purposely forgetting to remind you. Right? I think it's a trap. This is a trap. (laughs) It's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. All right. It's all good. It's all good. I've been kind of shy about it. I won't lie. That's why I haven't been telling you. That's okay. Oh, I see. So it is a trap. It it is a conspiracy. We've got an actual conspiracy afoot. You are. Yeah. 
You you are too much, Austin. This is this is BS. I demand a recount. All right, I'm just kidding. Go right ahead. What what are your other thoughts on I this? Totally uh, this lost you. <laughs> what what are the other Egyptian uh, ideas you got here regarding uh, th- that cheat code? Like Joseph said, is is this a thing? Is the past really the future? And we're just trying to catch up to what they knew thousands of years ago. What do you think about all that? Oh, personally, I'm gonna have to risk being wrong again and put my chips on that we've been really advanced many times in the past then we keep like wiping out over things like maybe we were living with more extravagant beings that were more genetically mutated maybe the hieroglyphics like i'm seeing in the general of uh, the troubled minds discord i'm seeing some of these they got bird heads uh, dog hybrid things well they're coming out with this kind of stuff now like pretty public too before it was like a conspiracy theory you know when you see a a pig dog thing like fish washed up dead on the shore or whatever but i think uh those times are here again i think they're they're coming and i don't know what we're gonna get into i think going all ai and stuff we might actually like incarnate beings that live in those frequencies that Maybe some people think we'll give them power because they want to live forever, but then they end up doing the same thing maybe they did many times before in the cycles of this planet and maybe even others, you know? Yeah, it could like be. just recycle. Yeah, exactly. Well, so recycling, uh, it, it, seems, it seems so crude to use that term, right? Because you see like the thing <laughs> yeah. about recycle and you got like the recycle symbols and you throw the nasty pizza box in the box, you know what I'm saying? But it seems nasty to, to kind of put it in terms of that. But recycling souls, yeah. right? If that's what's going on here and they did develop some way to, 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 to use that cheat code where they could come back and reunite flesh and spirit in in the one entity man that's a that that would be literally immortality oh. that would be immortality right like it's just yeah. even if you, like you can outweigh history they just put you in the sarcophagus they seal you up right they make sure that you're going to last in perpetuity and then well when the technology comes around bam they can bring you back you're back you, you're back you're back yeah so interestingly enough maybe that's what's coming on here what's up alex what's up uh got got a quick shout out here Uh, alex on youtube says holy shit i finally caught a show live what's up bro welcome to the show (laughs) what's welcome to the show all right Uh, what else you got what else you got uh give me uh give me 30 seconds austin uh go ahead you got a 30 second monologue i'm gonna step away for just a second i'm gonna go grab my phone because we got some folks uh tipping on rockfin that says it's not showing up but it sends me a text message so i'm gonna i'm gonna step away 30 seconds keep talking about this i'll be right back i'm gonna mix up a cocktail and maybe juice while you're gone roll it bro be right back all right so we got the the pyramids. Uh, there's way more pyramids than the ones in Egypt. There's this uh, archaeologist on a different channel. I don't know if I should talk about it, but I should just say the archaeologist. Uh, what's his name? Um, he's uh, in Bosnia currently. There's a pyramid. Apparently a lot of pyramids are earth pyramids, and people overlook them. There's ways to measure for them. They all have a lot of similarities. But this guy thinks that the Bosnian pyramid is way cooler than the Egyptian one. And I didn't even know there was one in Bosnia. It's kind of like right under a mountain. It's like he explained to how he determined it was a pyramid. It's got caves just like pyramid. It's just made out of mud bricks. But uh, there's mounds all over Ohio. And as he was somehow connecting those with them. I think all of, all of this has to do with with uh studying energy and vibration tesla was into the studying that and he was also obsessed with the pyramids and i don't think it was just the egyptian ones that they're all over the world and they're aligned a lot of them are thir- on the 30 degree parallel of the planet and uh what else do i got you're good i'm right here i'm with you i'm with oh cool 
I'm with I you. I needed you. <laughs> I got you. I've been here listening. I've been here listening. I just have to go grab my phone. Uh, so just real quick, uh, hate to interrupt you there. Uh, you on to get some good stuff. But yeah, so uh, we do have tips coming through. Appreciate it so much, guys, on Rockfin. We have uh, Dark Devious, Tam Bam sent two. Both of those went through Tam Bam. So please stop smashing the tip button. You're amazing. Uh, they did go through and one from Robert. So thank you so much to all of you folks. Appreciate it. Like I said, uh, all that stuff helps. And um, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm honored. I'm blessed. Thank you for enjoying what we do and being part of this community. Um, so, so what else you got? What else you got, Austin? We got uh, Kelly on deck, and we also got Matt on the phone. So, so uh, if you want to, you want to hang out, you're welcome to, to hang. But uh, let's uh, let's wrap up your thoughts, I'll and just, then we'll we'll get back to this uh, I'll, later. I'll just I'll just throw the archaeologist's name and do a mic drop. Uh, Bosnian pyramid decoded, advanced technology, thirty four thousand years old. Doctor Sam Oskimit. Oh my God! I'm never going to say his name right. I put it in the general. I put it in the general. It's like a Bosnian name, and it's. I know it sounds so cool when you say it right, but I'm not going to say it right. So, all right, mic drop. Gotcha. Perfect. Perfect. You're the best. Appreciate it. Uh, do check out Austin's channel. It's short, quick. We'll have a link up as soon as he's comfortable. And uh, thank you, thank you very much, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go to uh, Kelly. You there? Let's go to Kelly real quick, and then we'll do Matt as well. And uh, what's going on, brother? How are you? No good, man. How you doing? Ah, doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, uh, these these types of conversations uh, make my world go around. <laughs> what do you think about all this stuff? Uh, we're going to work Matt in too. So give us your initial thought. We'll get Matt in, and like I said, you're 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 welcome to stay as long as you want, of course. Well, yeah. Um, the uh, my first initial thought was like you were saying about um, them digging up bodies and stuff and playing them. I mean, I don't see a problem. You know, digging up history like that, maybe. Uh, you know, examining the bodies, you know, doing your, you know, you know, whatever they do and scientifically, whatever DNA they want to pull out or whatnot. But I believe they should probably put those bodies back, you know, this is desecration, actually. And I'll tell you reasons why a little bit later, but I want to get into it. But, um, yeah, it, I, 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 you know, because that's where a, a place where they're, you know, a place of where they're, uh, you know, the body was put to rest, you know. So there are, it's, it's a reason for marking places. But, yeah, I think they should uh, probably put, I mean, I don't know if you want to say with all their little trinkets and stuff, which is, you know, some of that stuff is actually pretty cool. I mean, I don't understand some, some of the reasons why they did their type of mummifications was, you know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. So... Yeah, getting into it though, man. <clears throat> the the book is originally named was uh, "Coming Forth by Day" or or "Emerging Forth into the Light" instead of the uh, Book of the Dead. Yeah, I've seen other ones and, too where they said it's actually called the Egyptian Book of Life. I've seen other translations as well. So it seems to not be locked into that. That seems to be more of like a a marketing term, right? The Egyptian Book of the Dead. It seems like the the translations aren't exact as we're supposed to believe it. But yeah, good point. Go right ahead. Yeah. It's, it's more elegant than, you know, the Book of the Dead. But when they're talking about the Book of the Dead, you know, it was it, they were actually more of spells. You know, most of that stuff is spells. Uh, they're incantation, incan, incantations, you know, for the, you know, people that, that are dying, you know. It's uh, what they call when they, uh, when they go through Durrell, which is, uh, you know, uh, it's when they enter the underworld or, you know, after for their path to the afterlife. And, but, uh, yeah, it, it, some of those spells, but when you look at that too, the, it, it, it come to find out, you know, when they were looking through, uh, there was examples of people that, uh, pulled, uh, uh, what the, you know, the, some of the spells, it started around spell 128 inside there. That's where you actually, in Christianity, you find the, uh, the 10 commandments. Uh, some people don't want to, you know, I've had conversations with some people like that, uh, well, with, you know, with religious people, but, you know, some of that stuff, Christianity is actually known to, it, you know, a lot of that stuff is a lot of teachings from Egypt. Uh, a lot of, some people might not want to believe that, but it's the truth, but. Yeah, a, a lot of that stuff goes way, way, way back. I mean, I wonder, I think in terms of like human evolution forever, and just meaning kind of anthropologically speaking, that if if uh, maybe, what, what if Egypt learned that from something older than themselves, you know? I mean, it goes back and back and back, doesn't it? 
Yeah, and actually it does. That's the point I was getting at, which actually goes back into Sumerian, actually. So the the stories of the uh, of of those stories of, of you know their you know their gods of the Anunnaki, right? Uh, you know, each one had you know Enki and Leo, which is the brothers, right? Their sons, but like uh, Nigazita, he was known as Toth, and that, and uh, his brother were always fighting with him, which is his older brother, and that was uh, Marduk. He was he declared himself Ra. Around that time is where you know people will notice or will find that. You know, that's where some people claim that it was called the Pyramid Wars. <clears throat> it's because the, those uh, families were uh, feuding back then. Uh, actually, the the Sphinx was carved with uh, Nigazita's face because he was the ones who he was the one who designed and he didn't really build it, but he designed it. And you know, obviously, other people put in the work to it to to build the the pyramids. And gotcha. uh, yeah, so and and the story goes is that they even talk about it in you know in the tablets too where. You know that uh, he uh, Marduk, he was uh, killed. Uh, um, uh, de, de, his name was Demuzi. De he was a twin of a of a brother, and he was married to uh, one of uh, I believe it was uh, Inky's niece or something. Anyway, the stories are that they they're long, but uh, it comes down to where you know that's where you find that. Like I said, it was the Pyramid Wars, but. Uh, and it, and it goes forth on and on, but yeah, that's where I believe that that uh, what um, Nice Ark was talking about, like what he said, Pepe, that was the time before Egypt, right? All this weird stuff, but yeah, if you know a lot of that stuff, you look into it, right? And it's it's crazy because that's when you go into the Emerald Tablets, where you know that was Nigazita, where he he because uh, the times where I believe I believe in uh, some of the uh, some people, there was a, actually stories because of the the reason the pantheon where they were used to, you know, draw them with the head because they weren't allowed to, you know, draw them uh, as they were, you know, naturally. So who knows what, you know, they supposedly looked like. But what's weird is that if you go back to Sumerian, you actually have, you know, the carvings and whatnot, what they, you know, represent what they're supposed to look like. Right, exactly, exactly. Good stuff. Hey, uh, you can hang out a little bit. Am I right? If so, we're going to go yeah. to Matt. Okay, he's been waiting for 10 minutes, so let's get to Matt. So, yeah, don't go anywhere, Kelly. We'll go to Matt, and then we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, let's go to our good friend, Matt, in California. What's up, brother? You were on with uh, Kelly, Mike, and uh, Austin's still here. How are you? How's it going, Mike? Doing okay, man. A-OK. Talking about yeah. weird shit. <laughs> Doing what we do. <laughs> yeah, great topic. Thank you. What are your thoughts, bro? Uh, I, here, say, I think okay. the Egyptians, they knew... They knew a lot. Uh, they knew a lot of a lot of things. They knew about spirituality, and they knew about you know, they knew a lot of stuff, uh, astrology, all these things, and that probably more than we do today. And and then um, you know they always try to make it seem like oh these the Egyptians they were like these Neanderthal like primitive people that didn't know much, like they're trying to hide something from us when they teach it now like in modern times. And I think a lot of the knowledge is like kept like hidden from us. And one of the things too, I wanted to say was um, a lot, the answers might lie in a thing that happened was called the great Alexandrian library. And at the great Alexandrian library, they, I think they speculate, they don't know. They're speculating. Uh, they have these, they have these scrolls there, these Egyptian scrolls, the papyrus scrolls um, with knowledge on them. And they say there's anywhere between 50,000 and 70,000 scrolls that were there that were, um, they were burned. They were lost. And they were like one of a kind, you know, um, information that was on these scrolls. So yeah, yeah, everybody kind of shed a little tear because that was so much knowledge that we lost right there. And I think maybe the, the answers, you know, to the questions we're asking might've been in that. And we, we just lost them forever. They're gone. 
Which which but, seems wild, right? Uh, because of course it would be. You're talking about you, you corrected me last night. It was about 350 uh, AD is when the uh, <laughs> of Alexandria burned down. No, it's okay. It's, I it's, just it, looked, it, I didn't look it up. It's how we learned. You looked it up. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, it's hard. It's hard for me to lock the entirety of history in my brain at one time. You know what I mean? But uh, but so when it, if it happened then, you would expect that a lot of that information from the embalming process of right the the mummification stuff would have been at least some of it. In in contemporary times because it kind of ended uh, I think about they say uh, like the, the mummification stuff uh, in, in Egyptian culture at least the, the new kingdom and all the rest of that around I think it was like 200 AD as they said when it stopped so you would expect uh, that there would be information there in that library like you describe about some of those things and why they do them and you know how it maybe they didn't let those secrets out to the world at large but still you got you got to think that there would be some sort of of uh, maybe some of that passed on, right? And it is, it's tragic. It's a tragic thing. But hopefully it's uh, like we were talking about last night. Maybe maybe that information is stuck in a black hole somewhere anyway. So maybe we're cosmically covered. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think there was, you know, of course we know stuff, you know, we could, we could learn about it for certain things, but I, I'm just, my, I guess my question is like, what did, you know, what was lost? what do we lose in the, at the Alexandrian library that we can never get back? Uh, the, the, you know, how were the pyramids built? Those types of things. What was the whole purpose of the modification? Why they do it? I think maybe those are some of the answers that we lost. Agreed. 100%. Uh, and again, I think that's part of, part of the tragedy of all of this is what, what if they did, right? They were, let's say, let's say like 5,000 years ago, uh, in ancient Egypt, they were closer to, uh, you know, ascension in the secrets of the universe than we, we are now. I mean, doesn't that seem wild and also kind of likely? <laughs> kind of likely. Yeah. And also remember a lot of the stuff from Egypt, it does go back before Egypt. I, I always go back to Egypt because, like, if I'm learning something, I would, like, ask, like, oh, how would the Egypt how would the Egyptians have done it? That's just my, you know, how I think about things. But before that was Atlantis, and Kelly was talking about um, Samaria and, and some of the places before that, you know, the, they were doing that stuff, too. They were very spiritual, very religious people. And that's what interests me about it, is that they were into that stuff, and here we are. You know, we're just trying to figure it out, but we, you know, in our modern day lives, we have all the things that we're doing and we're not focused on, you know, the spiritual, we're more focused on, you know, what car to drive or what the Kardashians are wearing <laughs> and more than what, how, how they were saying, like everything they did was like for, like they worshiped gods and goddesses and everything they did was like in worship. Right, exactly, exactly, and, and that and, like that interests me. Like, uh, and like Night Stalker said a little bit earlier, uh, it, it wasn't about now in the flesh and living. the The real party was when you passed. <laughs> that's 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 mm -hmm. they took it that seriously. Yeah, amazing stuff, man. What else you got, my friend? Um, just quick. So I never read the Book of the Dead all the way, but I do have some books that it talks about each you know Egyptian god or goddess, and it has you know quotes or. Script, uh, how do you say it? Parts of the Book of the Dead, and Kelly is right. They are like, it is like poems, or I say incant incantations. Like a, uh, it's not like a you know word. It's how do you say it? It is like poems, um, hailing to the gods, or like asking the god for what you're asking for. And some of the books I have, there's like prosperity spells, there's healing spells, and that's why I'm interested in it because like that's all good stuff, like. If you want to learn, you know, prosperity and healing, they were they were talking about it too way back then. And exactly. the fact they worship multiple gods, that, that always um intrigued me too. Good stuff. And so uh, I think like I said, I never read the Book of the Dead, but I've read the Emerald Tablets of Toth. And um that book, if you can get into it, if you if you're into this stuff and you can get into that book, that book uh it teaches you a lot of um, you know, really crazy things about just life in general and and um just how to be a good person it's, it's all about you know healing and, and it's all about good stuff um how to become a b good person and and live in the light and all that so i think um 
we need to, I think we just need to study this stuff more and, and keep questioning it and try to figure it out. I'm going to end with that. Amen, bro. I, I have a link actually. They, I, they, I, have, I have a link here if you want to read it. Uh, I, I'll read part of the hymn so we can explain exactly what you're talking about. But sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I've got a link to this if you want to read it. I just think, I just think, yeah, the Egyptians, they knew some stuff. I'll just put it that way. And <laughs> if we're able, ever able to, they knew, they knew their stuff, you know, and I think a lot of the information has been suppressed or taken away from us on purpose because they don't want us to know like what they knew. They might have known like the actual answers, like the secrets to life and things that, you know, and like I said, we lost all that information and now here we are just kind of trying to get back to that. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Great, great stuff as always. You were the best. Right. Matt in California. Appreciate the Thanks, call. Thanks, Mike. Good night. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Look, like I said, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding when I say every single person that calls on this show is three times smarter than me. Great stuff, Matt. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we get together and look, uh, the, the, the parts, right? The, 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 the parts together are greater than the sum of the whole or something like that. I probably botched that. Uh, Kelly, thoughts on that, my brother? Um, yeah, I mean, um, he was right on some, a lot of those stuff, the points, but it was one thing I wanted to bring up too was, uh, when we were talking about a couple other shows, when we were talking about like the world, there was a worldwide civilization and stuff, right? This is another point to that actually, when, uh, we talk about mummification, right? So Egyptian, yeah, they did it, but, and they did it in, in a very different, uh, actually a different way than most people did. But it was the same type where, you know, body wraps and everything else. But who else did it was actually found in um, South America, right? And their mummification was starting around 7,000 to 5,000 B.C. And it was over in uh, Chile. And it was, they were called Chinchorro mummy, mummies, but it was the Chinchorro tribes, which was actually, so that would be about 2,000 years before Egypt was even doing that. So that's what's pretty interesting where, like we were talking earlier too, like um, they found that bowl that had like uh, Sumerian texts, uh, like kind of like pretext and everything. It was, you know, it's on the inside of it. it. was That was found in Bolivia. You know, the whole reed boats and stuff like we were talking at that time. But yeah, that's that's pretty interesting where, you know, again, like South America and the whole Middle East connection. Yeah, I, I can't remember the name of that bull. Uh, it's it's trying to trying to trying to come into it, my mind, but it's okay. Called the Fuenta bull. What's it called? The Fuenta Magna bull. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll pull that up and put it on the screen. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we we were talking about this not too long ago, and so 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 you're suggesting that actually this isn't even the Egyptians. This is that they took it from somebody else, right? Yeah. Well, and that's where I, you know, I, I, I bring in with like the Sumerian, you know, the whole thing with that, you know, I mean, not to always come back to that, but it always seems to go back to that. You know I mean? Everything that, uh, it, it, or an advanced civilization, you know, that somebody that had, and, and I'm not going to say that it was always like, you know, they, they got around on boats. I'm talking like with, uh, you know, flying, flying, uh, spacecraft or, you know what I mean? What we call UFOs and stuff. You know, because they're all, everybody talks about, you know, their their gods or whatnot coming down from the sky. You know what I mean? So it's, for me, it's, I believe that that's what it is, you know, that's, and, 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 and you know, making some of those connections like that is, it's just incredible, you know. For instance, like that, mummifications, you know, it's just the way, that, you know, the type of buildings they did, you know, you find the same type stuff or like the knobs. They were on these giant boulders or, you know, these giant uh, bricks that they were like, you know, laser cut, you know, that was over down in like, you know, in that area, Peru, Chile, Bolivia, stuff like that, you know. And then you'll find that the same type in Egypt, you know, and, and, and these texts, you know, there's, they're just people that are just deciphering them. And it's not just uh, Zachariah Stinchin. There's other people that have gotten books, you know, they're, they're writing what these things were. You know, and uh, for example, I give you like, you know, the one that they was talking about with, uh, you know, the original book of, you know, creation of mankind, the deluge, stuff like that was the seven tablets of creation, you know, and that was 
that was fine in, uh, in the city of Nineveh in, in modern, you know, which is Iraq, northern Iraq, you know. All that stuff throughout Turkey, Iraq, all the way down into Egypt, you know. And then this valley, which is, you know, going down in through, uh, all the way down into India. I'm with you. Oh, yeah, just, um, just you know, just, I just could keep going on. It's just, I'm just saying, just the, the connections, they're all throughout that, you know, the gods, the pantheons, everything that's, it's all, it's all, uh, but for, for me, for, to get back to the show, the, you know, the point of it was the reason why, and the, again, going back to that one, they talk about the Sumerians, you know, the Anunnaki, they could, um, not the Sumerians, but the Anunnaki, they, uh, they can bring their people back to life. And that's the reason why they do that. You know, if they were to die here on this planet, that's why I say take those bodies back because, you know, if these people, if these people come back, you know, and they're going to be looking for some people that were, say they were, you know, uh, grandsons or nephews or, you know, throughout their, throughout that, you know, that, because most of the mummification you're going to find was all through like, you know, priests, high priest or kings or queens and stuff like that. You're not going to find that, you know, really in like, you know, people like what they call lower Egypt, you know, people just basic. They're going to try to, you'll find people that, you know, they found some bones where, you know, it could have been like a village, you know, leader or something where they stuck them in there. But most people there, you know, you're not going to have mummification. You'll have, you know, like where they buried somebody or something, but as in the advanced mummification of, you know, wrapping every finger and pulling out the... I don't understand why the whole pulling out the brain thing, though. Because, uh, like, with in in those stories with the Anunnaki, they can just bring you back to life. You know, they've done it a few times in those stories where, you know, what they did, it was like a... Uh, and they said it was like a transmitter with this uh, crystal. They go over the, you know, over the body 40 times. And then they also have to give them what they call the life the food of life and the water of life and, you know, in their mouth and then boom. But, yeah, you, uh, you know, what's interesting about that too. So, so I think, again, I, I, I'm not an expert uh, clearly in anything, by the way, literally nothing. So nobody believe a damn word I ever say, just, uh, it's always food for thought. But I think the reason why they pulled out the organs is because they were, they were, uh, like ver- vessels that held so much water and so, if they left them in, it would actually uh, decay the body. You know what I mean? So you have you, you. The point is to get as much moisture out as possible. So I think that's why they did that. I don't think it was like to decouple like the body from the organs intentionally. There may have been a religious purpose, but I think just as kind of speaking in terms of uh, preserving the thing for as long as possible, you'd had to pull all the water out and like the kidneys and the liver and the brain is just all just chock full of water. And if they left it, uh, the mummification process wouldn't stick. I think that's probably what happened as as a result of when they, you know, kind of trial and error as they tried to do this way back in the day. Just one man's thought. I don't know, but it, it seems to make sense to me. Uh, definitely. Well, Go ahead. Go well, ahead. Now, that, now, now that you're saying that, I remember that, you know, I know the heart was actually, they had to weigh their heart for... Uh, against a feather. World too. Well, who was his name? Uh, for Anubis. An, it, was, it was Anubis, right? I think it was Anubis. Yeah. It, it was like they weighed it, but I, I I know that there was other particular reasons, but that's the that's the interesting part. Okay, so back to the other, you know, the uh, these other... Uh, cultures that do mummification too. Japan, they did also did the same thing, you know. But uh, the Egyptians were just, uh, you know, some of their, that shit was like artwork too, man. Some of the ones you've seen, some of the wraps, or like over the man's face or the human, or whoever it was, man or female. It was, you know, the it, the, the wrapping, it was like a diagonal, man, that shit, the pattern on that shit was, it was like they wove that shit on his, on his face. That's the that's the incredible part about you know and every little part, but yeah, for me, in, in that sense, you know, if I if I look at in, in that Sumerian, you know, in the Sumerian text, that would be the reason. So if these like again going back to where you know they're pulling out all these you know these kings or whatever, and some of them are they already known that you know like uh, I think it was uh, even King Tut and his family, his dad, they all you had the elongated skulls too. They were actually represented with the elongated skulls. 
the sisters especially too because they had they even got x-rays with them too their heads were elongated but <clears throat> again with that though so for me you know that to me and when i look at too with you know the whole you know from uh the the skulls in peru and then you know the second ones were the most that they find is between the black sea and the caspian sea right that's the connection that you know they're finding there because a lot of you know they have the dna that um uh, Robert, uh, what's his name, uh, Forrester, Mr. Robert Forrester, I think it is Robert Forrester, yeah, um, he was, uh, a lot of his stuff, man, was, he's got a lot of information on that, I posted that to Discord, but, yeah, he's, uh, it's interesting that, you know, that's the, that's the, the similarities, the connections, too, where it's almost that whole worldwide thing, and if I'm looking at that type of shit, man, I don't think that's human at all. And, you know, if you're going to go biblical, you know, with wording and everything, Genesis, you know, making an hour image, you know, then you have the Anunnaki. Then you even have, like, in the, even in the Egyptian pantheon where they were showing that they were creating man, you know, and there looks like a little guy sitting on a wheel. You know, they're just spinning with mud and stuff. And it's all the same. That's what I'm saying. The stories just keep going back. So I just follow it back to the oldest, and that's where it always seems to lead. Yeah, right. Uh, funny, funny that. Uh, so, so do you agree that uh, it seems like we got a lot of catching up to do for all the science and all the things that we know now? It still seems like we kind of don't know jack shit compared to you know the t- ten thousand years ago. You know. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, that's that's almost a gimme too. You know, with all the stuff that you know that's being left behind. That's where I say it's always not only writing, but you know, like you know, in the in the structures of buildings and you know. What, whatever they were building walls or whatnot. I mean, the truth is built, was made, and it was left in stone, you know? You can rewrite anything over in paper. But the megalithic things that you're finding that we're seeing around the world, you know, and just the incredible stuff that, you know, we're digging up, of course there was, man. There was, it was, uh, and they always say, too, like, I don't know, there was, like, we're living in the fifth world, you know? There's other, really, you know other cultures that believe that you know that you know i think it was the mayans you know we're living in the fifth world right now it was like four worlds of destruction who knows you know we're just it just it's always that saying too man there's nothing new under the sun you know and it could be that pattern like from what we were talking last night where you know they were just how life is being splashed about throughout the universe and you know all that knowledge is being sucked into black holes and you know, it, it's nothing new under the sun. It's just, you know, you're just, re- you know, uh, another culture just relearning it. Exactly. Just uh, nothing new under the sun. I like that. And it, it seems it seems kind of true. The more we look into this stuff, it's uh, it's been going on. A lot of this stuff been going on for a very, very long time. And uh, you kind of wonder, too, like you said, you trace it back to the earliest. And so at some point, the earliest, uh, the trail runs cold. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the earliest is... What we find, it's just, well, that's how far back we can trace. So, uh, yeah, like uh, <laughs> it's it's a little bit um, actually inspiring, right? That's the word probably when you go back so far that uh, a lot of this stuff may have actually been locked in That's so, so many years ago. You know, 10,000 years is kind of that, you know, ice age uh, sort of, right, from, from then to now, the flood, all that stuff. But what about like the civilizations prior to all that, man? Like I'll bet you... I'll bet you, like you're saying, like this goes back a very, very long way. And uh, here we are just kind of uh, fumbling on rediscovering a bunch of these things. And it's a, uh, it is, I think it is inspiring. Good stuff. Good stuff. It is. That's why archaeology and stuff like that it, it intrigues me a lot because, you know, people think that you're going to just find like, you know, oh, uh, you know, uh, I don't hear, you know, you find some, uh, a sword, you know, maybe from ancient time a little bit, right? But you go back older, you know, flint, stone, rocks, or whatever, but then you find these uh, megalithic, incredible carved, right? No mistakes any fucking wear on this thing. Megaton fucking build, you know, it's just, it, it just, and it's like in some of the hardest material that you find on Earth, you know? It, it can't be cut with anything else, but it looked like with a laser, or whatnot, you know, and this shit is just scattered about everywhere, 
You know, some of them is in clumps. Some of them, yeah, of course, it's all being hidden. It's either being buried. It's been buried throughout time. Where you know, some people would think that oh, it's got like a, you know, it's it's a bad omen there. We should probably bury it. You know, that type of attitude, or or just hiding history itself. You know, maybe they don't want us to find that stuff. But it just takes time, man. And 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 for, for right now, I think what you know, what everything everybody's into this archaeology and the the boom that's going on and. And, you know, I, you know, I follow a lot of different pages as well that were, you know, were some megalithic sites were, I mean, that even like even, I, and I've watched almost every ancient aliens and some of these ones that I have never even seen. And it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, and it's still like, I still take uh, still pictures of some of this shit and it's, man, it has me and I, I'm like, holy shit. How come we haven't even seen this shit yet? You know, let alone seeing what the amazing stuff that, you know, examples of ancient aliens. What I like about that is not only they know their theory, but like the history of the planet that, you know, that you've never even got to see that's been hidden. That's never even been talked about. You know, you've never. And it's because of that is is why, you know, people now are are even having an eye opening of what of what kind of ancient history or you know, hidden technology that's been hidden from us for thousands of years and it's still going on. But it, I think the bell is, you know, it's finally lifting. Yeah, pe- people are waking up, man. That That is for damn sure. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing, you know. Like I said, it's uh, all, all of this crap they're, they're feeding us. You know, we know we're on the same page with this. There's no reason for us to hate so much. My God. It's like, it's like everything, like I said, everything is so backwards. The media is like, oh, stop bullying people. And what does the media do? Constantly bullies people, right? If you don't, if you don't follow their indoctrination process and, and the church of the media or the church of whatever the hell, the future, whatever the hell they're trying to call it, then you're the one that's bullied. It's all bullshit. It's all a bunch of garbage. And until you see it personally and understanding what they're trying to do to you personally with all the brainwash, well, then, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, get with the program because, no, you don't have to hate people. It's not, it's not part of being human. It doesn't have to be. It's a part of being human, but it doesn't have to be. There, there are ways around this. You're the best, Kelly. Uh, we got Tam Bam on the line. You want to hang out? You're welcome to stay. Uh, like I said, you always have the option, my friend. No, my brother, I think I got to go. I got to get up in the morning for work and stuff. So it was a good talk, man. Absolutely. I liked it. Absolutely. I appreciate all the info you always bring to us. You were the best. All right, my brother. You have a good night. Thanks, bro. You too. So you had to miss show for us. Let's get it. Let's go to Tam. Let's go to Tam. Tam Bam. Welcome to the show. Test one, two. We're talking about ancient Egypt. We're talking about the mummification process. We're talking about the cheat code to maybe the uh, kind of skipping in line in the uh, reincarnation cycle. And is this a thing? What's up, Tam? How you doing? Hi, how are you? Ah, doing very well. Thank you very much for asking. What do you think? What is? Okay, your... I'm going to talk. Go ahead. Go. My ahead. opinion. Go. Let it I'm going to talk about the same same thing, but different. Okay. I uh, was I, I came across uh, this interesting little um, article which brought up a video which showed you know how it goes off different tangents once you start researching, and it's just. You know, the, every time they ex- they find a tomb or, um, in Egypt of a pharaoh or whatever the case is, like recently they just found a, another uh, tomb, and um, I'm not too sure if they've opened it, but um, they're in the process of it, which I think. And um, every time, especially with Tutankhamun, they opened up his tomb and um, exhumed the body, and they just... They start to scan it, you know, go to MRIs and start, they actually start to scan the body. And what the scientists were saying is that, you know, potentially, especially with the technology they have today, they can potentially re, um, recreate these pharaohs. So they're trying to actually look for viable DNA that um, because they're so well preserved, they're looking for viable DNA so they can actually um, make another Human. What is the process called again? Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, re- cloning. Uh, the, the mummy. Cloning. Wait, wait. Say that again. What was when, the question? When you make another. When you make another human. Cloning from, from DNA. Cloning. Yep. Yeah, cloning. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's cloning, right? Yep. So um, 
they want to clone Tutankhamun, and that's where they're kind of thinking of going. But my my thing is, if the if Tutankhamun back then was a pharaoh who was considered, you know, a, a, a god, and he t- had all these things and all these people that served him, you're going to bring him into a world. Firstly, if he has the same consciousness of where he's actually in a science experiment, and if he is, say, for instance, let's be far-fetched about it, if he's reintroduced into society, he's going to be a nothing. So um, I don't know why these scientists are doing it and what is their purpose. They've already achieved cloning. Why would you possibly want to reincarnate or a clone a pharaoh? And why is it a thing? Why are they even talking about this? Why are they even wanting to do this? I think it's quite horrific. Because when you die uh, as a pharaoh, um, the, pro- pro- the process of mummification is to preserve the body so well, as m- much as possible. So uh, they believe that um, your spirit is still kind of half contained in your body. So that's why they have all the riches and they, they actually put food and furniture within the tomb. And their spirit roams around there. So, and you, they need to um, stay there firstly to have all these things that they need if, uh, if the part of their spirit is still in the tomb. And the other part of their spirit is ascending to wherever they believe. Um, they need to be, they need to kind of be in good, in a good place. And um, so that is pretty much the curse of all these pharaohs when you exhume the tomb that they actually get angry they need to have an immortality a kind of situation going um oh, how do i explain it they I need to be I, I got some you. yeah go, go ahead go yeah ahead. Go ahead. If you so can, they need to ahead. be somewhat immortal um so they don't want to be exhumed their bodies don't actually want to be exhumed because they lose all these things and that is why there's curses on their tombs, with, especially when grave robbers come. I mean, they steal everything. How is their spirit supposed to survive in the tomb without the things that they need? Because that's what they believe in. And when you take all these things and you exhume the body, they, they believe that their spirit actually, you know, it wanders and it's an, in an awful place. Yeah. So, so, so if the scientists know this, why are they doing this? Interesting take here. So, so uh, like Nice, nice Tucker said earlier, maybe the, this whole mummification process is for that immortality cycle to finally take mm. place at some point in the future. But exactly, so you're right, like tomb robbing or even scientifically removing these tombs and putting them in museums, you are literally robbing that aspect from them, right? That immortality. And so back to the very first question I, I asked tonight when we first started – is do you think it's ethically okay to remove even scientifically these tombs when they find them and put them in museums? How do you feel about that? I don't think it is ethical in any sort of way because we need to really take a step back here and realize we kind of actually learned a lot from the Egyptians. I mean, they really invented paper. You know, the the doctors there, they didn't just exhume the, they did, when they did the whole process of mummification and removing organs and putting into jars, they didn't just do it for the fuck's sakes of it. I'm, sorry, I'm in third hour. We're third hour, you're good. Uh, by the way, oh, just shit, real quick, we, I know we got new people coming through all the time. It's not a double standard. The first two hours on radio, so we try not to curse. The third hour is off radio, so nobody gives a fuck. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> okay. So they don't they don't do all this mummification stuff with removing of organs for the hell of it. They actually do it, and they learn from it. So the doctor's process of anatomy and all these things, uh, they actually wrote all these um the, how what the stomach looks like, the the uh, uh, the organs, and whatever these things do, processes down onto papyrus, and they really invented papyrus, which became paper, and the prescriptions that doctors use today to prescribe medicine when you go to the doctor is actually what the the, the uh, physicians in ancient Egypt did as well. They wrote down, and this is how we actually in ancient Egypt we adopted a lot of their methods to this day so we need to also understand if we learn so much from them why is it necessary to go and exhume what they considered sacred why why must we go now fiddle with that it's unnecessary just learn from it 
Yeah, no, I agree. Right. There, there's a ton of that in history that it seems like we sort of um, just just gloss over, glaze over as a as a. Uh, well, you know, these these knuckleheads back in the day didn't know anything about anything, so they just were, you know, making up these spells and whatnot that don't mean anything, right? It's like, wait, the, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a whole lot to history that I think that we always miss, that we'll always miss, we'll always miss, and I think it, I think it becomes down to to the, back to that same thing I always say, right? Human hubris. It's the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're here and we're now, we think we're it. You know, because of all the technology, all the great things humanity has done, et cetera, so on. I always say it's the same thing. Like, I, I'm not, there's nothing special about me. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, always. And that's you guys. That's, that's literally people who've done the work on the internet, people who've done, like, the scientists, like, literally goes back, the anthropologists, the archaeologists. Clearly, in my opinion, nobody has all the answers. However, we can gather a bunch of this data and try and come to our own conclusions. And I think that's okay. Like I said, it's not, it's not because we know better, right, or are the it because we're in the time slice right now that we're experiencing life, right? That shit come and gone 10,000 generations before us. You know, so it's like that whole human hubris cycle of us in the now sort of thinking just because we're here means we have the answer to me it is a joke. It's a big joke. And that's that's literally part of the, the whole fallacy of why I do this show, why we started this, because in the end, currently modern is great. Right. But also we kind of don't know shit. Right. And that's what this is all about. Yeah. Right. I completely agree. And, and you know, I have my sound theory as humans in general cannot fathom or create an, an idea that's, that hasn't stemmed from something that was given. Like if, you know, we can't think of something unique. It's impossible for a human to think of something abs- absolutely with, unique without it stemming from some fraction of a story or something that they've heard or read or something that they've seen it's really impossible and i always tell everybody just try and think of something that nobody else has thought of and it's really impossible and um and this is comes back to what you were saying is that even in the even the ancient egypt egyptians got all their source and and uh, and information from their history so whether it be exactly exactly aliens or uh, what what did Kelly say from the Anunnaki or from whoever Assyrian. they got all that exactly so it, it all stems from something and it's a growth and a process why and I think they were further along than we are in specific things yes we've got modern whatever but they had something different and it's more in depth and and more spiritual than anything else because scientists these days don't understand it doesn't give them the fucking right to fuck with it yeah, that is well, my opinion yeah well i mean I, I think they have to i think it's kind of the mandate of science to you know progress but uh, but i think you're right like uh, uh in in my opinion on all of that i think that human hubris the ego right is what gets in the way of mm. all of it that's that's part of the problem oh, like yeah. we we kind of can't respect nature and culture and right anthropology as it is it's it, you know we um and the funny part about all that anthropology it's fine it's great right they're they're doing their best to kind of put together the pieces of the world of the the ancients but also for the most part they're guessing on a ton of shit and so it's like well uh, you know so it's okay for them to guess but it's not okay for us to guess no fuck off that's what i mean right it's like there's there's no uh gatekeeper here to an open mind nobody can shut down an open mind and that's it and here we are doing our thing talking about it tim you were the best what else you got what else you got on this uh this egyptian uh mummification stuff any other thoughts well, i just want to i just want to say well, like what you're talking about now um it's it's the same thing but different again so something that also like really really baffles me is is carbon dating I mean, I understand, you know, the scientists are, you know, they carbon date things and they say, oh, it came from like 300 million years ago. But where, where's the bar? Where, where's, how do you work that out? Like, for real, like what is the bar set that you can actually say 100 million years? Because as far as I can fathom, you, they're going, the scientists are going on 
only recent history, and we're talking about only a few hundred, maybe thousand years, how can they really, really say something is really a million years old? And it's all uh, uh, fictitious. No, well, not fictitious. Let's say it's all uh, somewhat scientific calculations, and they can all, you know, it's all theory. But unless you have a bar set and you've been there, you can't really say. So I feel that common dating is utter horseshit. Yeah, to be okay. honest. Okay, so I'm with you in that I'll say it's sloppy. So carbon dating itself with particular things and particular instances can be extremely accurate. However, however, right, they're basing it on like the, the decay rate of the carbon molecule. And so that's all is fine. But like you said, it, it's impossible in some cases to come up with an accurate result. And you'll see it, you know, if, if you part of the problem is like most of the, the science that like the world digests is through filtered through the media. And so they'll say, oh, 30,000 years ago, this should happen. But if you actually go read the scientific paper, they'll be like 30,000 years plus or minus 8,500 years. You know what I'm saying? They're basically saying, we kind of know, but we don't really know. It's like it's, it's the best guess we have based on the data we get. So I'm with you in that it's yeah. sloppy. It can be very sloppy, but it also can be very accurate. And so that's, that's part of the problem. That's part of why we get together and talk about this stuff because it, it isn't as simple as just because some asshole on uh, Vice or you know whatever whatever other kind of garbage net the Guardian uh, says this it, it, it's media spin right it's not the actual science even the science will tell you if you go read the direct paper itself there's a range right there's a range of plus minus there's a range of maybe they're doing some maybe juice too right and, and again especially the softer sciences like uh, archaeology anthropology. They're, they're making shit up, okay? And, but it's okay, right? Because they're doing their best to make up their best guess. But that's fine. But still, it's still the best guess. It doesn't mean it's the truth. And so, yeah, here we are. Here we are. Don't even get me started about that because they're teaching kids this as fact well, and not, well, we think. It, well, exactly. And I think that you need a preface with all of that stuff. I think, I think, mm-hmm. you, uh, I think you need a preface with all of that stuff. Like you kind of need to just say, hey, look, this is the best idea we have right now. But that, you're right. That's not the way it was taught. That's not, that's not the way. Because, because of course, it, it's all yeah. about a power structure, right? It's, it's about the power mm-hmm. of who's teaching the truth. And so if the truth is sloppy, then it's not the truth at all, is it? You see. Yeah, but this is the thing. Because Tutankhamun, they exhumed his body, that, that um, mummy, his mummy was um, 3,000 years old. And, and in his time, that was magical. It was spells and, you know, they had physicians and all these things. That was 3,000 years ago. And the scientists are saying all this other stuff happened a million years ago. It, it just doesn't, I don't, I don't get it. We, if it's built on something and... The Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, were uh, so spiritual then. What happened before? And they got it from somewhere or something or some kind of influence. What was it? And it, it, they make it as if it's fact. Um, it, it, this is where it started. This is how it went. And this is what we're going to teach. But it's not. Well, I, I mean, know. again, right? I, th- I think that's part of the problem. Like I said, it, it's power structures. It's, it's, if you say, well, we kind of think it's this. You know what I mean? Then people people kind of go willy nilly like us, and we're like, okay, well, what do you mean, kinda? Let's let's go see if we can get better than kinda, you know? And that's what they don't want. They they want like the education structure to be, you know, uh, point by point, you know. And that's anyway. We we agree. We agree that I I don't in general terms want to undermine education at all. I think science and education and all that stuff is amazing. It's good. Push forward. Mm-hmm. I think that it, in, in terms of framing it, I think that's where we fail. And again, human hubris, because yeah. we're here and now, we seem to think that we know it all. But no, come on. Also, fuck off. We don't know it all. Of course not. <laughs> like, like we're, we're, again, t- tens of thousands of lifetimes, uh, t- sorry, tens of billions of lifetimes prior to us and th- 10,000 10, generations Come on. Of course we don't know it all. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's about time to wind this down. What are your final thoughts? Yeah. Actually, before we do that, Rev165, what's up on DLive? I see you there, buddy. LNF, I didn't say hi to you. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. Yeah. Uh, what are your final thoughts here? Tam, bam. Let's rock this. Thank you again for, for, for your generous tips. Don't on, make a big deal. On, uh, I won't make a big deal. Thank you. I'll say thank you. What are your final yeah, thoughts? But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What are your final thoughts? <laughs> 
Um, keep questioning. Keep um, be your own uh, research scientist. Don't have to do everything. We don't have to be the physical scientists. We have to understand every integral thing and um, and damage, you know, whatever we find. But do the research and be open minded and just accept everybody with love and kindness. Amen. It's hard to argue with that. Keep searching. The truth is out there. Well, and do we have it? I won't claim so, but I will claim that questions are sometimes more valuable than answers, and that's what we do. Tam Bam, you were the best. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for listening. Thank you for waking up early Thanks. to listen to us. T- Tam Bam wakes up before the sun sometimes to listen to Troubled Minds, and that's, uh, that's incredible to me because I ain't waking up before the sun for anything. So thank you so much. It's going to be earlier from Sunday. Earlier. Earlier yet. 3 a.m. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Don't do that. <laughs> my goodness <laughs> you're amazing thank you so much for all your takes tonight thank you again for the tips over there sure. thanks for uh thanks for waking up early for us oh. it means a lot oh of course right cheers on. guys thanks cheers to you all right so let's uh let's wind this down i don't know if uh jay jay's out there for the jtro we usually do a jtro but uh jay's got some things he's been juggling he's making some youtube videos so we'll uh we'll get we'll uh we'll, we'll help uh push that channel if you guys can would be so kind as to follow him as well follow tam bam by the way on instagram you can find her uh t- instagram if you scroll down on both uh uh, YouTube and Rockfin. You can find Tam Bam's Instagram. She's also in the process of starting a YouTube channel. We will uh, push that as well when she's ready for us to do that. The thing is this, like I say, it's not about competing, guys. Like, we, Look, if we're, if we're cool to each other and everybody wants to prop each other up and help each other, thumbs ups and the likes and the watch times and all the stuff and follow each other, we suddenly have a huge network. We suddenly have a bunch of people that are like, wait a minute, but we don't have to compete. Let's help everybody. And guess what happens? We can all succeed together, and that's the way it is. So I truly believe that, and that's part of why I always do that. When people call in, I know they have a channel and stuff. It's important to spread that word because they're they're spending their time not just with us, but they're building something outside of this as well. And so bringing part of that to us as a, to have a greater conversation. Like I always say, it's true, and it's 100% true. Prove me wrong. I'm me. You're you, but together we're us. And you see what happens when you get amazing people call in as part of this conversation tonight. It starts with just a simple article about Egypt and how they found some new tomb from the time of Ramses the Great. And look where we ended up. It's crazy. It's unbelievable how nuts we go on this. But it's not because of me. It's because of you. Like I said, you are the secret weapon of troubled minds. And thank you so much, each and every one of you. But let's, uh, let's wrap this. Let's do it. Let's get the hell out of here. As we finish, you guys know the drill. We do about three hours, uh, and we do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. on, uh, again, all the, all the platforms, Fringe FM. We do it on YouTube, Rockfin, DLive, and, of course, Twitter. And we're just hanging out. We're having a good time talking about all the amazing things out there. So if you guys like this show, please, please, please spread the word. Just spread the word. Just go tell somebody. Just say, hey, look, why are you watching that crap you're watching? Come check this out. Come hang out. Come call in once. See what's going on here. And that's what it's all about. That's what this is all about. And so uh, we're out. Let's do it. Let's wrap it. Thanks, everybody, for the amazing phone calls. Uh, make sure you give some love to all the folks that have the channels. Again, Night Stalker, uh, Jennifer, uh, Tam, follow Tam Bam, follow James Salcedo, follow uh, Short Quick, follow um, when Kelly gets a channel up, follow Kelly. All Everything. Everybody out there, links are down below. Follow, follow, follow. Go give some love to those folks. Thank you guys so much. Follow the Curious Bunny on YouTube. Please thumbs up and subscribe, all those things. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Penny, appreciate it. All right, let's roll it. Let's wrap this and let's uh, smash this button. Which means the outro music. All right, let's do it. So, as we finish, the bad news is we're done. The good news is, God willing, we have tomorrow. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific, we do Troubled Minds News on Twitch, exclusively on Twitch, and then that gets pushed to the podcast feed. And you can find us on Monday and Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific Time on Twitch, doing a news show, because of course there's too much to talk about. I can't turn everything into a three-hour show, but the news show is more of like a quick hit. This is what's going on. This is what I noticed from the news cycles. Sort of my take on what the news should be, all right? Instead of Fox News, CNN, and the rest of those assholes that are like all division all the time. Who cares? Who cares? Literally, who cares? We get it. 
You hate people that are not like you. CNN and Fox. We get it. Guess what? Me personally, I reject that notion. And you don't have to hate people that are different than you. That's it. As we finish, thanks again for hanging out. You guys are the best. More Troubled Minds on the way next week. Go uh, If you want to support the show, again, you can follow us on Rockfin. Rockfin, Rockfin, Rockfin. You can donate there. You can sub up to the channel there. Got a Patreon. All the links are on TroubledMinds.org and on the YouTube page everywhere. You can find it. Just, just spend a little time looking. If you can't or don't, come hit me up on Discord. I'll help you find those things if you want to support the show. If you don't, if you want to support the show and don't want to spend your own cash, hard-earned greenbacks, I understand. Listen to the show on the podcast feed. Just turn it on. When you're cooking or something, just put the show on. It's simple. Listen to a show maybe you heard in the past or you didn't hear. And commercials play. And it's pennies, but pennies out up. So if you want to help us, pennies from heaven, just listen to the podcast feed. That'd be Spotify, that'd be iTunes, that'd be any of those places you listen to podcasts on. There we go. Simple ways to help the show. You can do it for completely free. There we go. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for spending your time with us. And we're done. So as we finish, you know the drill? Be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. This thing's still on. You're talking on the stream. Have a great weekend, guys.